What is up, party people? My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create a real estate website with WordPress step by step. Now, if you're a real estate agent or a real estate firm, having a website today is almost a requirement. A real estate website allows you to showcase your listings for potential buyers. So today I'll show you how to create a professional and modern real estate listing website step by step. And the great part about this video is you don't need to know any sort of coding or have any experience because we will be using a simple drag and drop builder to build your real estate website. So you can be a complete beginner and manage your own personal real estate websites. Here you can see we have our listings. It showcases the property, beds, baths, and more information about the property. And as you can tell, this website looks really professional with modern designs. So today I'll be showing you how to list your properties, apartments, or even rentals step by step in this video. In this video, you'll have access to more than 30 pre-made templates that look great. These demos range from basic real estate agents to real estate firms to full-on real estate directory websites. In this video, we will be using a free drag and drop page builder. This page builder is really simple to use. You simply drag and drop elements onto the page. You can then adjust the styling of the elements. You then click on save and all the changes you made to your real estate websites will be live and ready to go. Now, I, I understand that the term real estate is a little broad, right? So let me explain who this tutorial is for. Number one, a real estate agent. If you're a real estate agent with a few properties under your belt, then this tutorial is perfect for you because I'll be covering how to submit your personal listings to your real estate websites. Number two, a real estate agency. If you're an agency or company that manages multiple real estate agents, then this tutorial would also be ideal for you. With this website, your customers will be able to log into your website and submit properties on their own. They will also have their own personal custom dashboard and CRM. With this CRM, they can see their deals, properties, and they can also see messages from potential buyers. You can see the locations of your visitors and they can also respond to inquiries listed about their properties. Your agents will also be able to add listings and manage them directly into their dashboard. They can also see the number of views and visits on their analytics for their properties. Agents can also import their own MLS listing. I'll be talking more about MLS later in the video. Number three, an apartment listing website. This website is not just for real estate property. You can also list apartments, rentals, or any property on your real estate website. You can completely modify and configure any part of this website to adjust and fit any criteria of the real estate market. And lastly, a real estate directory website. If you're an agency and you want your visitors to list their own properties on your website, then this tutorial is also perfect for you. With this website, your visitors and agents can create their own listings. You may offer free listings with upgrades like featured or paid listings on your real estate directory websites. You can even offer memberships on your directory websites. Also, this same WordPress theme and website fully integrate with IDX and MLS. I'm sure many of you real estate agents have your own MLS, right? So if you guys do have your own MLS, I'll be showing you guys services later in the video that'll integrate the MLS for you using the same WordPress theme and websites I'll be showing you how to make today in this video. Now, making this website is also very affordable. It'll be like less than $100 that you're going to spend versus going to a company where they're going to charge you like tens of thousands of dollars, right? So if you guys are an agent and you want to create a real estate website, this tutorial is for you. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed what you guys have seen so far. Also, make sure to give this video a big like. I do spend a lot of time on these videos, right? So we're going to build your real estate website in five simple steps. In step one, we'll get our domain and web hosting. A domain is the name of your website, like mycoolrealestatewebsite.com, and web hosting will host your website online 24 hours a day. In step two, we'll upload a WordPress theme and import the demo content. We will be using the number one most popular real estate theme for WordPress. It comes with more than 30 demos, tons of features, multiple languages, and even RTL support. It also fully integrates with IDX and MLS. In step three, we'll design the website. I'll be showing you guys how to use the drag and drop builder to build your website. We're going to be using a free, simple drag and drop page builder to build your real estate website. In step four, the theme options. The theme options are critical. Theme options are the bread and butter of the features of your websites. It allows you to fully customize it and change specific styles and layouts on your real estate websites. And I'll talk more about this later in the video. In step five, the CRM and monetization. I'll be showing you the CRM for this real estate theme. It's very convenient and has a really nice setup. I'll also be showing you how to add monetization on your website, just in case you wanna make a little money with your real estate websites. So now let's go to step one. There is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast web hosting. 
And this is Hostinger.com. Now, Hostinger.com is among the fastest and also the cheapest web hosting available. Right now, they're having their Black Friday sale, but I have a discount code that's even better than their Black Friday sale. So even after watching this, you guys still will receive the maximum discount code available. And you guys also do get a free domain. Now, once you guys are here, if you guys do wanna adjust the language here on the top, you guys can change this to any language that you want. So you can change it to Spanish or German or Portuguese or Japanese or whatever you want, right? So you guys can go ahead and select your language. But once you guys are here at the top, you guys will see WordPress. Go ahead and click on WordPress. Now, once you guys click on it, you'll click on claim the deal, or you can just scroll down. And here we have three different plans. We have the premium, the business, and the cloud startup. Now, I personally recommend the business because this actually gives you increased performance and it also gives you access to NVMe storage, which is a lot faster than SSD storage. So once you guys are here under the business plan, we'll click on add to cart. So next we're brought to our checkout page. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. And here we have to select a period. So you can select 12 months, 24 months, or 48 months. I personally recommend the 12 months. This will give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. You guys also do get the largest discount available. You guys get a free domain name and you guys also get a 30 day money back guarantee. So once you guys select your period, we'll then scroll down here. You guys will go ahead and create an account. So you'll put your email and your password your Google account or Facebook or whatever it is you guys want to use, you guys can create an account right here. And below that, we'll select our payments. So you guys can pay with credit card, PayPal, and even cryptocurrency, how about that? Now, what I want you guys to do is right here under the coupon code, I have a larger discount code available than their current Black Friday sale. So right here under have a coupon code, if you guys enter the coupon code Daryl10, you guys will receive, I think it's like 70 something percent off here. We'll go ahead and type it in here. Daryl 10, and I'll click on apply. So it went from $53 to $48, and that gives you a maximum of 71% off the hosting package. So the next thing you guys will do is go ahead and enter in your credit card information. And once you guys enter in all your information on this page, I will go ahead and meet you on the very next page. All right, so once you guys make your payment, it'll then bring you to this little wizard. So right here, I'll click on start now. So next they're asking us, who are we creating the website for? But I do wanna skip this wizard. So right here at the bottom, I'll click on skip. I don't want personalized experience. The next option is create or migrate a website. So right here under create a website, we'll click on the select button. Next they're asking us to select a platform, but I do wanna skip this because I don't want to propagate all this stuff. I want a fresh, clean slate of WordPress. So at the bottom right here, you'll click on skip. I will start from scratch. Next, we have the free domain. So under claim a free domain name, we'll click on select. And then you'll type in your desired domain. So whatever domain that you want for your website, you'll go ahead and type it right here. So my domain is available, darylwilsontutorial.com. So right here, I'll click on continue. So next they're gonna ask you for some details. So right here, you'll put the country, you'll put if this is personal or company. And next I'll click on next step. So next we're gonna enter in our contact details. This is where you're going to enter the details to claim ownership for your domain. This is important if you guys ever want to sell your domain or if you ever want to claim ownership, you guys will need to enter in your contact details so that your information can be verified. So go ahead and fill out your information here. All right, so once you guys are done, you'll then click on finish registration. So next they selected a server for us that gives us the best performance available. So next I'll click on finish setup. Okay, awesome. So now our website is ready. Now we can either view the website or go to the control panel. But right here, let's go to the control panel first. So right here, click on manage site. So here is the hosting or dashboard and this is where you can get all the information about your websites. So here you guys can see that our plan is active. We have our domain. You guys can also set up free emails with Hostinger. Pretty cool, right? And then also you can see your performance score. On the left side, you have different tabs, right? So you have hosting, you have performance, security, and this is where you can get more information about your hosting package. So here you have your name servers, you have the hosting details, and then you also have these server details here available. Resources usage, this lets you know how much you're using on your website, right? So right here, I'll click on performance and then go to page speed. So you guys can also analyze your websites by going over here and clicking on analyze. Once you guys do that, it's going to analyze your website's performance. This takes probably like, I don't know, five seconds. 
And here you guys can see that our website has a 97% PageSpeed score on the PageSpeed Insights. Of course, you know, there's nothing on the website yet, so it's going to be very fast. And the more you add to it, the slower it may get. But we'll walk you guys through all that in the video. So next we have the analytics, which shows you the top countries visiting your website and also some errors. If you guys do have any errors, they'll all be displayed right here. It also shows your total requests as well. Next, we'll click on the security and click on malware scanner. If you guys ever suspect there's something on your website, like a virus or something, you guys can always check the malware scanner and they'll notify you if your website has any viruses on your websites. And next we have the SSL. Now, Hostinger actually automatically installs the SSL on all websites they propagate. And SSL is this little cool uh, padlock up here that gives you the connection secure. There was an update a few years ago that Google required all websites to have it, and now Hostinger gives it to all the websites by default. If you guys do need any help with your website, they do also offer a little chat box here where you guys can go ahead and um, you know ask them a question. And if you guys do have problems with your website, you guys can go ahead and go through the form right here. And there are support agents that can help you with any problems you guys have on your websites. So that is pretty much it for the support and the interface. Now, before we build our website, we do need to verify our domain. So the domain that we actually purchased, we need to verify that in our email inbox. If you guys don't, after two weeks, the website will disappear. So make sure that you guys um, verify it. You guys can do this by going to your email right here and you'll see that you have an email from Hostinger. This right here says important, verify your contact info. I'll go ahead and click on this email and you'll need to click on this link right here. This will go ahead and validate and verify that you own the domain. So I'll click on the link and then you'll see that the email address has been successfully verified. Pretty cool. You guys will also need to do the same thing for your hosting your account. So right here, verify your email address. Then I'll click on verify email. So after you guys verify your account, it'll ask you for two-way authentication, but I'm gonna skip that for now. So I'll click on cancel. So now let's go to WordPress. Right here under hosting, we'll click on manage. So next, let's install WordPress on our domain. WordPress pretty much allows us to build our website with drag and drop builders and make it really easy to build our website. We're gonna scroll down right here and click on websites. And then we're gonna click on auto installer. Here you're gonna see that we have WordPress available. So I'll click on WordPress. And here we're just gonna give our website a name. You guys can always change this later. Don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal, but I'll put my new cool websites. Here we have the email and then we have the username and then also a password. Make sure that you guys write these credentials down because you guys will need this in order to log in and log out of your WordPress websites. Once you guys enter in your credentials, you'll then click on next. Here they're just telling you they're gonna install WordPress. So right here, let's click on install. All right, cool. So now Hostinger has installed WordPress on our domain. Right here under admin panel, you guys can click on this to log into your WordPress websites. So let's click on admin panel. Okay, so now we are logged into WordPress. This is their setup wizard, but I'm gonna skip it. I never liked any of the setup wizards, to be honest. Uh, here, we'll click on dashboard. So this is your WordPress dashboard, and this is where all the magic happens. Now, if you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, here at the top, I'll click on visit sites. And this is our new website. Pretty cool, you know, they entered in some just basic demo content for us, you know, I guess just to help us get started, but uh, we're gonna delete all this and we're not gonna use any of it, but it is still nice they gave us something to work with. So let's go back over here to dashboard. So before going any further, now let's adjust the general settings. So over here under users, let's click on profile. Now you guys can actually change the color scheme of the back end of your website if you want blue or ocean or midnight. I like midnight the most because it's really easy on the eye to see what you're doing, right? Now we're gonna scroll down right here and this is where you guys can also update your email. This is where your credentials will be sent to in case you guys do forget your password for WordPress. They'll be sent to this email right here. So make sure that you guys do have access to it. We'll go ahead and scroll down. Here you guys can make a new WordPress password. So if you guys do want to change your password, you guys can do that right here. And then once we're done with that, we'll click on update profile. Next, we're going to go over here to settings and click on general. Here, you guys can go ahead and also update the email if you guys want to do that. And if you guys do speak any other various languages, right here under site language, you guys can change this to 
any language you want. I mean, they have tons of languages you guys can use right here. So you guys can select Spanish or German or French or any language that you guys want. Once you guys do select that, we'll scroll to the bottom and click on Save Changes. The next thing we're gonna do is update our permalinks. So right here, I'll click on permalinks. So here we have the permalink structure and you always wanna set this to post name. The reason why you do this is because you want your website to say, you know, mycoolwebsite.com slash about us, right? Or slash contact us, not all these random numbers and letters and it doesn't make any sense. Post name is actually optimal for SEO. So go ahead and select post name, scroll over to the bottom and then click on save changes. All right, now let's go ahead and click on our dashboard. Now let me show you guys how to log in and log out of your WordPress website. So right here, I'm gonna log out. So I'll click on log out and I'll go ahead and just visit our website. And as you guys can see, it brings us to our websites. But as you guys notice, there's no way for me to log into the websites. If you guys do wanna log into your websites, all you gotta do is go to your website, type in dash WP dash admin and press enter. This will bring you to the login screen where you guys can log in with your WordPress credentials. So you'll enter in your WordPress credentials here. I'll click on remember me so I don't have to keep logging in. Then I'll click on login. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can log in and log out of WordPress from any location. Okay, now before we install the WordPress theme, there are some server settings that I quickly want to adjust before I go on any further. So we'll be using a premium WordPress theme and I just wanna make sure that you guys have the recommended PHP configuration limits uh, as stated right here. So what we're gonna do just to make sure we're on the same page here is we're just gonna make sure that our server limits are set to these specific limits or better, right? And this is very simple to do and I'll show you guys how to do this right here in the back end. So all we're gonna do is here you have our dashboard, right? On the left side, we're gonna scroll down and you're gonna see advanced. And then you're gonna see PHP configuration. This really shouldn't be an advanced. I mean, PHP configuration is a very common thing actually. Our PHP is 8.1 or better, right? So yeah, 8.1 or here, yeah, 7.4. So we definitely meet that criteria. And over here, I'll select PHP options. And we're gonna scroll down here and all we're gonna do is just make sure that we have the same numbers as the recommended uh, server requirements. So the max execution time is gonna be 1000, right? Max execution time, we'll put 1000, okay. Max file uploads, we have it at 20. Max upload file size is 48. So really quick, let's go ahead and scroll down here. Our memory limit is 2048. So our memory limit is above 128, which is good. Past, I'm sorry, post max size is 48 megabytes. Here you'll see our post max size is way above recommended, right? So I'll just knock it down to 1024 megabytes, right? And then the upload max file size is 48. We're gonna scroll down and just make sure, look at that, we have plenty of room, right? So our upload max file size is also 2,048 megabytes, which essentially means you can upload two gigs on your website. Once you guys adjust those server settings, you'll then click on save. So for this video, this is why I recommended Hostinger because a lot of shared hosting websites, they don't allow you to change this, but with Hostinger, you can. All right, congratulations on getting your domain and hosting. It's very simple, right? So now that we have our domain and hosting, let's go to the next step. Now we're going to download and purchase the houses theme. The houses theme is the number one most popular real estate theme for WordPress. I actually made a whole nother video where I tested out like 20 themes. So I really did do my homework before making this video, right? So we're gonna go ahead now and download and purchase the houses theme and then upload it to our WordPress website. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the video. So now that we adjusted these server settings, now let's go ahead and download and purchase the premium WordPress theme, Houses. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase, you guys ready? The Houses theme. Now the Houses theme is the number one most sold and recommended WordPress theme on ThemeForest. In fact, if you guys go to ThemeForest and just click on real estate, you're gonna see that the Houses theme is number one. To be honest, I think Houses is number one because it offers the most variety of features compared to a lot of the other WordPress themes. Some of these are good, you know, I do have a video on them, but for this video, we'll be using Houses because it has everything that you can possibly need for a real estate website. It also integrates with IDX MLS. So if you guys are real estate agents, I'll be talking more about IDX and MLS near the end of the video. So rest assured, this does use MLS and IDX because I know most real estate agents use that. So you're gonna go ahead and add this to the cart. This is about $69. And this is a one-time payment for lifetime access. So you'll never have to pay this ever again, which is pretty cool. 
So go ahead and add it to the cart. Click on add to cart. Go to checkout, right? Now, once you guys go ahead and purchase this theme, I will then meet you guys in the customer portal. All right, so welcome to your customer dashboard. So you'll see here that I have uh, two copies of houses, right? Because I use them on various domains. And what you're gonna do here is right here under download, you'll click on download and then click on installable WordPress file only. Also make sure that you guys do download the text here as well. So go ahead and also download the text. You guys are gonna need this purchase code in order to unlock the theme on your websites. Now, once you guys have downloaded this, we're gonna go back to our website and upload it. All right, so now let's go ahead and upload that WordPress theme that we have purchased. So right here, go to appearance and click on themes. And then right here, I'll click on add new theme. Now there are tons of free themes out there, but free themes are extremely limited. You know, like some of the landing pages look cool, but as far as features go, they all have various features and a majority of them want you to upgrade to the pro. So they just give you like a small taste of the theme, right? But we'll be using a premium theme that's specifically designed and created for real estate agents. So right here, I'll click on upload theme and then click on browse. So make sure that this is the zip file. So houses, real estate, WordPress theme should be about 12 megabytes, right? So right here, I'll click on open and then I'll click on install now. All right, cool. So once we install it, we're then going to click on activate and then we'll activate the theme. Now, the very first thing it's going to ask you is for the purchase verification. I do recommend to do this because this will actually allow you to install the plugins and import the demo content that we are going to import on the websites. You guys can find this information again right here by clicking on the certificate and purchase text, right? So I'll go ahead and paste in this purchase code and then click on verify. And voila, thank you for verifying your house's purchase. So we'll first start off by installing the necessary plugins by clicking on install plugins. Now, if you guys, you know, have ADD and you just deleted this or you closed it, you guys can always go back over to the, I think it's appearance right here and you'll see install plugins. This will bring you to the same exact page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on all these plugins, right? I'm not really gonna go too much into Slider Revolution, but you know, you guys can install it. It's a premium plugin, why not? You know, it's free. So right here, I'll go ahead and click on install and then I'll click on apply. Now it's going to install the necessary plugins for your website. This should just take like, I don't know, a minute. It's pretty quick. And once you guys install those plugins, just go ahead and hit the refresh page right here. And now you guys can actually activate those plugins. So it's gonna activate all of these at one time, right? So I'll click on the plugin, plugin, uh, bulk plugin selector click on activate, then I'll click on apply. All right, so it installed all the necessary plugins. Now, a lot of these plugins have their own prompt screen. So once we click on dashboard, it's gonna prompt you from like, you know, to go to various plugins. So it might open up like side of revolution, as you can tell, just go ahead and close this, right? So this is just another premium plugin. It's like a slider, but we don't really use it too much. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on dashboard here on the left side. Okay, so congratulations. We have now installed the houses theme. If you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, here I'll click on visit sites. And we're getting, we're getting warmer. We are getting closer as you can tell. It's, it's, it's starting to get a little bit more structured, right? So let's go over here to dashboard. All right, now the next thing that we're gonna do is we are now going to adjust some quick settings for the Elementor page builder. So over here, you're gonna see Elementor. Now Elementor is the page builder that we use to build the websites. And there's something that I do want to quickly adjust in the settings options before we go on any further. And that is the features and the intersections. So over here, you'll see features. Now don't panic if you don't know what this is, don't worry about it. Essentially what we're gonna do is we are going to turn on the intersections because the new Flexbox container is a little complicated for first time users. So right here, you'll see Flexbox container. I want you guys to select inactive, okay? So we're gonna deactivate this. All right, so once you guys select inactive, you'll just scroll to the bottom again and then click on save changes, okay? And that's actually going to turn on the intersections, which are a lot more easier. Also here under general, make sure that you guys do select these right here. So we're gonna select properties, agencies, and agents. This essentially allows you to turn the page builder on onto these specific pages. You'll learn more about all this a little bit later. Don't worry if you don't understand now, no problem. So we'll go ahead and save those changes. 
All right, real quick, I just wanna let you guys know that uh, the reason why we're going from Flexbox Intersections is I found that most users find Flexbox too overwhelming at first. And I, I do agree, right? I think Intersections are a lot more simpler to use. If you guys do wanna learn how to use the Flexbox, you guys can watch my other video, but I don't recommend it for beginners because it can be a little overwhelming. So uh, yeah, make sure that you guys do select Intersections. And uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump back to the video. Now let's import a demo. So over here, we're going to see houses, right? And then you're going to see all these options. We're going to scroll down to demo import, and we're first going to work off a template, and then we'll understand things as we go. So we're going to scroll down and here are the beautiful demos. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, I want this one. I want this one. I want this one, right? There are a lot of really good demos for this um, WordPress theme. And you guys can go ahead and just take a look at these, get some ideas, right? Uh, they also support RTL. And they even have a Spanish one. How about that? So if you guys are, you know, in South America or in Spain, you guys want to import a Spanish one, they already have pre-made ones made in Spanish. How about that? So the demo that we're going to install is the Houses 5. This is the one right here that we're going to import. The main reason why, guys, is because this is a very simplistic starter website. They don't have that many pages, right? For sale, for rents, our agents. It's a very basic format. And the other demos have like hundreds of pages and it's very complicated to get started with those. So we are going to use Houses 5 to get started with. And don't worry, you guys can always switch between other templates once you guys learn the basics. So you guys can always switch between templates and just start over on another fresh template, no problem, okay? But we'll first get started with Houses 5. So right here, you'll click on Import Demo. So next we'll go ahead and scroll down. Now these are optional plugins that you guys can install on your website. Essentially they help you with like, you know, SEO and WP forms. I actually have tutorials on both of these plugins. If you guys do want to watch those, I will leave those in the description, but those are for whole nother videos, whole nother topics. So we'll save that for later, right? All right. So right here, we'll click on continue and imports. Now this might just take a minute. So I'm going to go get a coffee and I'll come right back. All right, so the import is completed. And all we gotta do right here is click on visit sites. And this is our new WordPress website. Well, kind of, there's one thing that we have to fix, right? So if you guys did get this page right here where it displays the post, all we gotta do is assign the home page as our home page. Now this is a very quick fix. So at the top right here, I'm gonna click on customize. Now this is the theme customizer. Well, it's, it's a small version of it, right? Now for the homepage settings, all we're gonna do is we now need to select a homepage right here, right? So for the homepage, we're just gonna click on homepage. And voila, look at that, it's our beautiful websites. And then we'll click on publish here. Also for post page, I do recommend changing this to blog as well. We're gonna create a blog a little bit later, but uh, this is the actual blog page, right? So yeah, also change the post page to blog, right? And then I'll close the theme customizer. And look at that. We now have a beautiful website. So here we're gonna scroll down, right? And you'll see we have these properties and it shows the bedrooms, the baths, the square footage. This is a beautiful demo. You know, it really is nice. You know, all you gotta do is probably just change this green color into something like blue, you know, something more corporate. And here we have our agents. We have our services. You can see this is just demo text, right? It's just waiting for us to just go in there and just throw in our content and then we'll be good. Now for your first website, this is probably amazing, right? It's really, really good. So we can also go ahead and check out our, our other pages. So we have our about us page, right? And you'll see it's the same thing, right? We have our demo content, we have our agents, right? Good looking people, right? We have our blog posts, right? And blog posts is a great way to market your website, right? Here, like 10 quicks, 10 quick tips about business development, you know, and here's a blog post. And all you gotta do here is just throw in your contents and add in, you know, some information about your company and you'll be on your way, like you'll be good, you know? So, and then you'll see here, remember how we have the I Love Hiking under the bio? So that's where it displays. So maybe just add in an image of yourself, put in some more bio and you'll be all set. And then your related posts here show at the bottom. Really, really nice, you know, I love this demo. So next we're gonna see for rent, and right away, you'll see that we have this, there's nothing to show here. Don't worry about this. This is, we'll talk more about this later, right? But we can get rid of that. But for now, you'll see that we have our rentals right here. So if you guys have rentals, you guys can display your rentals right here. And if someone clicks on one of these properties, you'll see it shows in this really beautiful format. You know, we have our pictures right here. We have more pictures, right? 
We have this beautiful pop-up right here. I mean, this is just like the full package. This looks amazing, right? And then people can share this to Facebook. They can also favorite and stuff like that. As we scroll down, you'll see every property has their own description. We have Brittany Watkins is the real estate agent, right? And you know, we can go ahead and say, I'm a buyer, I'm a tenant, I'm an agent or other, right? Here is the address. You'll see by default, they use OpenStreetMaps. We can also open this on Google Maps as well. We'll be talking more about how to integrate Google Maps onto your listings a little bit later in this video. But um, this is a great little, you know, quick way to, to use Google Maps without embedding it on your websites, right? And we'll keep scrolling down here. We have our details, right? So we have the price, property size, the year built, all the information about the property. You guys can actually add more so you'll see here how there's additional details. We can add in more, like for example, septic tank. You know, I you know I know about septic tanks because uh, my my old uh, house that I used to live in, my parents, it had a septic tank. So you might need to tell people, hey, there's a septic tank, which sucks, but hey, you know, you got to tell them, right? Here we have features, right? So you can add in some more features about this. And a really cool feature is this mortgage calculator, right? So let's say someone's broke and they're trying to figure it out. They got a whole mortgage calculator on their website where they can calculate it to see if they can afford the property, right? Here we go, we got floor plans. We even have a video, which is awesome, right? So here we go, we got this video right here of the actual property. And this is great if you guys want to you know, showcase a video of your property. Now there is another feature called virtual tour. I don't know too much about it guys, but I'll show you a website where you can actually create virtual tours for your properties as well. Here is the what's nearby. You'll see that we can embed Yelp, right? And then we have our contact information, which is the real estate agents. And we finished this off here with our similar listings. So you'll see here how we have similar listings about the actual property and stuff like that, right? Really, really cool. And then people can leave a review. You guys can disable this, you know? I, I don't really know if you should allow this, people to leave reviews on properties, but whatever, you can have that. Okay, so that is the for rent. Here's also the for sale, right? Don't worry about this, guys. We can take this off in just one quick click, so don't worry about that. And then these would be like their for sale, right? Where you can say, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna sell these properties instead, you know? And this is the same format, right? But what's really cool is people can compare this, right? So they can compare this one and this one and then click on compare, right? And then here they can get a quick comparison about the properties, right? Really, really cool. You know, I, I do love this, right? Go ahead and just scroll back. Okay, and then here we have a sidebar with some more information. People can also preview this. They can add it to their favorites and so on and so forth, right? So as you guys can tell, it's, it's a very clean, real estate website. It's very simple to navigate. It has all the features that you can possibly need for real estate websites, right? And we'll talk more about listings and all this a little bit later. Let's now click on our agents. So here's the agents, right? So if they are looking for agents, they can say, oh yeah, Michelle Ramirez, that's the girl who I was talking to, right? Let's take a look at her listings, right? And then under her, you guys can actually create specific listings that she will be uh, managing, right? So for example, she has eight listings and people can actually review her, you know, like, oh, she's great, I love her, or, oh, she's whatever, you know, and so on and so forth. Okay, so yeah, we'll go ahead and go back to the, we'll, we'll script agents, we'll go to the blog, right? You gotta see this, right? And then here we have the contact us page, right? So you guys have a really beautiful contact form, right? And people can send messages directly on your websites. So Daryl Wilson, and then here is my email. Hey, great video. And then I'll click on submit. Now, if this does not send to your email, there is something that I'll be talking about a little later that will force the actual website to send it to the email. So don't worry about it. So if you guys do fill this out and it doesn't send to your email inbox, don't worry about it. I'll be showing you guys a free plugin that will fix this and it'll fix the WordPress not sending issue. So let's go ahead and click on the homepage. Now, before we design the website, I first wanna show you guys how to create agencies and also agents. Over here, if I click on agents, you'll see that there is a list of agents, right? So we can actually create agents for your specific agency. So I'll walk you guys through on how to do that. Let's go to the dashboard. 
On the left side, you're gonna see there's a few tabs, right? We have houses, we have real estate, and then we have theme options. You're gonna go over here to real estate, and under real estate, you're gonna see a list of options. I first want to go ahead and click on agencies. At the top right here, let's go ahead and add a new agency. And this would be your agency or your business, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put in Daryl Wilson's Real Estate now the next section, I'm just gonna add in some demo description. This is the description that will describe your actual business. So this is the description that's gonna represent my business. And then here we have agency information. So you want to enter in like your email, your phone number, uh, languages you speak and so on and so forth. All right, so I went ahead and I just threw in some random content right here, like languages that I speak. And I also just put in this number sign for all of the social media websites, but you'll go ahead and link your social accounts right here. Next we have agency, and here you wanna set a featured image. Now this is the image that's going to represent your agency. So I'll go ahead and click on set featured image. Now you guys can upload your own images right here by clicking on upload files, and you guys can go ahead and upload your files right here. But we also do have some demo images under media library, and we can just use this just to get started with. So for my agency, I'm gonna go ahead and use this image here. I think that looks pretty cool. I'll set this, and then I'll click on publish and then publish again. All right, and I'll click on view agency. So here is our agency. We have Daryl Wilson Real Estates. We have the image, and then also here we have the license number. People can also send you an email, and this will go directly to your inbox, and they can also call you via Skype or whatever app they have on their computer. And then right here we have the about Daryl Wilson. We have some description, languages spoken, and on the right side we have contact information and all of our social icons. So that's how we can create an agency. Now let's go ahead and create an agent. So let's go back to the dashboard. And right here, real estate. And then we'll click on agents. So we do have a few agents right here for the demo content, but we can go ahead and create our own. So right here, I'll click on add new. And let's go ahead and put the agent's name. So Daryl Wilson. And then I'll just throw in some demo content. So I went ahead and I just put in some demo content right here, you know, just saying, hey, Daryl Wilson's committed, focused, you know, he's a professional and so on and so forth. And below that, we have some more information. Now, short description, I'm actually not sure where this propagates. I'll go ahead and enter in some short description. And then below that, we have the email address and also all this information we need to fill out. So I'll go ahead and fill out this information really quick. So I just went ahead and I put in some demo content. You'll see I put in the address, area served, and then all this other information. So I'll scroll down here to the bottom. Also here, make sure to enter in your social URLs. I just put a number sign just to make it propagate. Below that, we have the company logo, and this is where you guys can upload your logo by clicking on upload files, and then you guys can upload your logo to the websites. If you guys don't have one, no problem. We can just click on media library and just use one of their demo logos. So I'll click on this one. So here's my company logo. Then over here at the top, I'll click on agents. And this is where we can add in a featured image right here. So I'll go ahead and enter a featured image of Daryl. Let's see, who should we pick? This guy, this guy, we'll pick this guy. Set a featured image. Okay. And one more thing I do want to select is right here under agencies, we can now select Daryl Wilson's real estates. So this person is now a member of this specific agency. So I'll go ahead and click on publish and publish. All right, so let's take a look at Daryl Wilson. I'll click on view agent. All right, so here we go. So we have Daryl Wilson. He is the agent at Daryl Real Estates. We have his license number, area served, his specialties. Here is the picture of Daryl. And also we have the company logo at the bottom left. People can also send Daryl Wilson an email and they can also give him a phone call. And below this, we have the description about Daryl. So we have about Daryl Wilson, the description, and then we have the languages, right? We have the contact info as well. And then users can go ahead and you know say, hey, this agent's great. They can give him a rating right here and then they can give him a review. So that's how you guys can create agents, right? And the agents will also propagate over here under our agents. So over here under all agents, this is gonna display a list of all the agents that work for your company. You'll see Daryl Wilson. We got no reviews, but uh, hey, that's okay. And then below that, we have our other agents, Michelle Ramirez, Brittany Watkins. You guys can go ahead and delete all this other demo content because this is just demo content. And then you guys can start listing all the agents for your real estate websites. Pretty cool, right? So now let's go ahead and show you guys how to create partners. Now partners is optional. You guys don't have to do it. I don't really use it, but I'll just show you guys the feature anyway. So if you guys do have partners over here under real estate, let's click on partners.
If you guys have partners, you guys can just go ahead and publish those partners here. Let's get rid of all this demo stuff, right? And then I'll click on add new and then we'll create a partner. So this will be like Patty Wax Real Estate. And then we'll just put in a, you know, put in a, a website here, Patty Wack Estates. And then on the right side, I'll select a featured image. I'll just use this one right here, right? Just some random little icon and then click on publish. Later on, when we use the page builder, you guys can actually propagate your partners. Um, I don't really use it too much to be honest, but uh, you know, you guys can create partners right here. And then if I click on view, it'll showcase your partner, right? So it's, it's not even on the demo contents. I don't really think it's necessary, but you guys can always showcase partners. So let's go back to the homepage. Pretty simple, right? Now we have a beautiful website that we can work with. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the drag and drop page builder. It's very simple to use, you know, after probably just like an hour or two of using it, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. In case you guys want to learn more about Elementor, I do have like a four hour video that talks about Elementor and all the features. And I'll put that in the description below of this video. But for everyone watching this video, the free version really does just fine. You don't need the pro, right? In my personal opinion, right? So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and go back to the video and design your website. So now that I showed you guys how to create agencies and agents and also partners, now let's actually design the website using the page builder. Now, if you guys know how to use Elementor, I still recommend to watch this section because there are elements that I'll be showing you how to use in this section of the video. So to turn on the page builder at the top right here, you'll see edit with Elementor. Now Elementor is the page builder that you guys use to design the website with. Now remember earlier how we went to the Elementor settings and turned on intersections. Here's the intersections. Essentially, this replaces the Flexbox. Flexbox is a little complicated. I have videos on it, but I just don't think it's beginner friendly. So on the left side, you're gonna see elements and you guys can drag and drop these elements onto the page. For example, I'll take this heading and then there's this pink line and I can just drop it, right? Now for every element with Elementor, there's three different tabs. There's the content tab. This essentially controls like the content and also you can add in links and stuff like that. Style will change the actual font, topography, color, and also add in cool effects like blend mode and stuff like that. The advanced section, this will actually change the position. You can add in cool motion effects, such as like fade in, fade out. For example, I'll fade in down, right? I, I do like fade in down. I, there's something elegant about it, right? Fade in left, zoom in up, and yeah, all these different, uh, all these different animations, right? So what you can do here is like put in your agency, right? So Daryl Wilson Real Estate, I'll center this, right? And then for the style, I'll change this to white so we can see that, right? And then I'll change the topography a little bit. You know, I, I do want to bold this. You know, I want to bold it. And here we can change the fonts. You know, a, a favorite font of mine is actually Poppins. So I'll just type it in here, Poppins, right? Here we can change the size of it, right? Zero Wilson's Real Estate. All right, and then you guys can also adjust the, like the line height, the letter spacing, right? Where you can space things out and a few other options. And then for the advanced, uh, you guys can go ahead and maybe even adjust the padding. So if you want more padding here to the bottom, let's see, we can add in space to the top or to the bottom and so on and so forth. Now there's other options here. Like I mentioned before, motion effects. There's also transform where you can rotate this, right? So you guys can get really crazy with this as you guys can tell, right? I mean, look, look at that. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and just go back to defaults, right? and I'll go ahead and go back to content. Now, as you guys can tell, I made a few changes here and I don't like what I did, right? So right here under history, you guys can actually go back in the history and redo everything that you guys have done, right? So if you guys made a mistake or if something went wrong, you guys can go back into the history and this will actually go back every single step while you're editing the website. So that's a great thing to have in case you guys made a big mistake, right? Which happens all the time. Now up here, I'll click on these little elements tab, little nine squares. Now I want to delete this one in the middle, right? So what I'll do here is I'm going to right click and I'll delete this. Now when you right click on something, you guys can also duplicate it. You can copy and paste. You can, you know, save this as a default. And there's a lot of options here that you guys can add to, right? So I'll go ahead and delete this. And as we go, you guys can add in more stuff, right? So here I'll add in some text, right? Under the style, put this in the center. Right, we have some text here. We can change the topography, right? 
if you guys want to add in an image, I'll just take this image, I'll drag and drop it. And then here we just added an image, right? So we can add in this little logo, right? And so on and so forth. As you can tell, that looks pretty terrible, right? So I'll right click and delete that. But we can scroll down here on the rest of the website and keep adding in more stuff. So for example, these right here are actually empty space. You know, it's just like an empty space just to make it so it's not so cluttered, which is kind of a cool thing, right? But what we can do is we can add in more features. If you guys want to add in a button, I'll throw in a button. Whoops, one more time. There we go. And I'll center the button, right? And then for the style, we can change the color, right? So the background color, change this to like, you know, red or to a green, right? I think we're using this green color, right? To a green color, right? And then for the link, I can put the link here. Now what's really cool about the button module is let's say for example, we have the contact us page, right? Just type in contact and Elementor will actually find that page and then it'll create the permalink for you, which is really convenient, right? And now we'll keep scrolling down, I'll click on the elements. So these are the basic elements, right? Now I'll go ahead and just close this. Next we have the pro elements. Now the pro elements are only for Elementor Pro, right? So we don't have access to this, but we don't really need the pro ones. And then next we have the general ones. The general ones are basically more free elements that we can use, like a counter elements, right? So you'll see the counter number pops up, right? Or we can use in something like a progress bar, right? So you'll see the little progress bar pops up. And then here are all the styling options for every single element, right? So I'll go ahead and delete this and delete that, right? And if we keep scrolling down, you're gonna see houses element. Now houses element are specifically referring to the actual theme. For example, here you'll see that this one right here is property cards, right? So the houses theme actually has their own elements to display properties. So for example, here we have property cards version one. I'll go ahead and take this and I'll put it above this one. And then you'll see we have these property cards, right? And here we can change the columns. So I want four columns or two columns, or we can change this to a list view, right? Pretty cool. I can also right click and delete this. Same thing with this one. If I don't like this one, I can right click and delete it. And then I can add in my own, right? So let's go back to the houses, right? So the houses elements, and let's try property cards version four, right? Let, let's see what that entails. Let's see what that looks like. A little weird. Okay, there it goes. All right, cool. <laughs> I was like, what? what's going on here? So uh, here we go, you know, we can display the number of properties and uh, you know, this one's not bad. You know, I think the other ones were better, right? So I don't like this one. So I'll right click and I'll delete it, right? Now, instead of actually scrolling down, I'll just type in property, right? Property and then here we go. We got property cards version one, version two. So I'll just go ahead and drag it right here. And when that pink bar shows up, there we go. And then we're back to square one again. And then of course you guys can go through these options right here. We'll talk more about filters a little bit later once we create custom fields. So we will come back to filters, I promise. I won't leave you guys hanging, don't worry. But for the style right here, you guys can change the property title color or the font, right? The address, the price, right? So here's the price, right? And if I wanna change this, I'll say, you know what? I wanna change this price to Arial. And you'll see that this applies for all of the cards, okay? So what you can do is you guys can go through every single option right here and you guys can design this any which way you want. And then for the spaces and sizing, you guys can also add in some spacing here. Okay. You guys can add in a box shadow. I actually like box shadows. Box shadows are this box shadows you can tell and now there's a shadow around the box. This will essentially try to emphasize the actual property. So you could actually change it to default or you can add a box shadow. It's really up to you, right? Here you have colors, and this is where you guys can add in specific colors for every single element. So for example, the price. If you wanna change the price to something like red, you know, whatever, right? Um, you can change the title color, right, to something else, to, let's see what we got going on here. Maybe like a, oh, there, that's a nice little blue. Ooh, I do like that. It's very subtle, very relaxed. I, I do like that. So you can go ahead and adjust all of the colors for the elements in the list cards. To be quite honest, guys, the list cards is probably the most important element on your real estate websites. Every other element with houses, it's kind of like, meh. You know, it's like cool, but you don't really need like, you know, 
listing tabs or listing sort by. I mean, this is for very advanced custom work. And most of you guys will probably just use the property cards. Let's take a look at property cards version seven. How does that look? Okay, you guys can see here, they've added in these buttons right here and they added in the compare and stuff like that. But I like this one, it's pretty cool, right? Tell you what, I'm gonna keep this one. We're gonna get rid of the other one. So we're gonna delete this one. You guys are ugly, all right? All right, we're, only the good the good looking properties are gonna stay up here, right? So that is pretty much a general rundown, right? You have the houses elements. These actually are elements for the actual builder, you know, and you guys can add these as you go. Now there's one thing that I do wanna mention. We do also have agents and we also have agencies, right? So over here, you'll see agents. I'll take agents and I'll put it above this, right? Here we go, there we go. And then you're gonna see the agents right here, including Daryl Wilson. So this is the agent that we just created, right? So what you can do here is you guys can create agents in the back ends, and then you can use the page builder to display all of your agents in a really nice clean format. So right here, we can also put four columns, right? If you want four columns, right? So we have all of our agents and then we have Daryl Wilson. So what you guys will have to do is just delete the other agents and then just create your own. Simple, right? Now there are other agents styles. So I'll type in agents, right? So here we have agents grid. Let's throw this in there. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, I like this one actually a little bit better. I like that. See the languages, how many properties they have. I really do like that. So you'll see that once you input all the information, it'll display it in a really nice clean format, right? So I'll go ahead and delete that. We will also delete this and we're back to square one. Now, if you guys do want to add a new section, let me show you guys how to do that, right? So here we have our Daryl Wilson real estate landing page. And if I want to add a new section, here I'll click on add a section, click on plus, and then here we can choose a structure. So what I'll do here is enter a three column row, right? And now we have three columns where we can add in elements. And what I'll do here is for the basic, I'll just throw in a heading text, right? Below that, I'll throw in an image and then I'll throw in a button, right? And this can be anything like friendly staff, right? And then I'll center this. And then for the image, I'll just choose an image of like this guy right here or Let's put the girl. I think the girl looks a lot more friendly, right? We have friendly staff, right? And then below that, we can add in some contents about the staff, right? And then obviously here, we can put that in the center, you know, to go wherever we want them to go, right? And then we can do the same thing again, right? So heading text, right? Image. And then we'll throw in some text editor below that. And then we'll just throw in a button below that, right? And then this one right here will be like, maybe we're uh, maybe we're fully licensed, right? I mean, is, is that a thing, right? Fully licensed? Yeah, fully licensed. How do you spell license, guys? Oh my gosh, okay, there we go. Fully licensed, right? We'll center that. And then we'll also make sure that this content, you know, it looks good. And then I'll center that as well. Now, earlier I showed you guys that you guys can actually duplicate modules. Did you guys know you guys can also duplicate sections and even entire rows? So right here, I'll right click on this and I'll duplicate it. All right, and then I'll right click on this column and I'll delete it. And then all you gotta do here is just change this to something else, right? Like we'll put like property management, right? Property management, we'll also do some property management. Okay. And one thing I do wanna mention is You'll see here we have this button, right? Now, I wanna take this button and I wanna apply it to these ones, but I don't wanna to have to do it all over again from scratch, cause that's a lot of work and that sucks, right? So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go to over here and paste the style, right? Paste the style and paste the style. Essentially what this does is that it takes all of the work that you've done onto this specific button and it applies it onto different elements, which is really, really cool. So now that we've created this section, we need to add a little bit of space, right? So under the edit section, under the advanced tab, I wanna add some padding to the top, right? And to the bottom, right? So you'll see we added 60 padding to the top and to the bottom. So now it's like a fully uh, built section. It looks great. You'll see if we come to the page, we scroll down, we have these three figures and yada, yada. 
So now if we go to the page and we scroll down, you'll see we have property management, fully licensed and friendly staff. So that's how you guys can essentially create sections and also rows and columns with Elementor. Now you guys can also right click on this section and even duplicate this, right? So now we have an entire section again that we can also duplicate. As you guys can tell, Elementor is a very powerful builder. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it and it's very convenient to just duplicate things, drag and drop stuff. As you can tell, you can just drag and drop this, drag and drop that and so on and so forth. All right, now really quick, Guys, I have a whole nother video about Elementor and Elementor Pro. This is a four and a half hour video and it goes over everything about Elementor, including the new Elementor Flexbox. You'll see here how we create this landing page from scratch. Um, it also talks about mobile optimization. It goes through everything that you can possibly want to know about the Elementor page builder. So I'll go ahead and leave this video in the description of this video for you guys to check out on your own free time. But I think at this point, you guys have a good understanding of how to use the Elementor page builder. It's quite simple to use, right? Now there's one last thing I do wanna show you about this builder before we go on to the next section, and that is mobile optimization. So over here, you're gonna see that there is responsive mode, right? And if I click on the tablets, so this is how our website looks like on a tablet. And as you guys can tell, the theme is already responsive out of the box. You'll see here are our elements, right? And if we scroll down, you'll see that even the listings are fully mobile optimized. So this is exactly what people will see on a specific tablet device. Now let's go ahead and change this to the mobile portraits, right? So I'll go ahead and scroll up. So as you can tell, you know, we do need to change this for mobile, right? So once you guys click on mobile portraits, we can now adjust these specifically for the mobile devices. So over here under the style, under the topography, you'll see that mobile portrait is selected. So we can actually change this for the actual mobile, right? We'll make this a little bit smaller. Now we need to add some padding here, right? So for padding, you'll see that mobile portrait is already selected and I'll go ahead and add in some padding here to the top. Beautiful, right? So now you'll see that um, everything looks great. It's pretty responsive, right? It shows the title, the description, and then also people can search for it. Now you guys can actually hide specific elements as well for specific devices. For example, if you don't want this text right here, you guys don't have to delete it. Under the advanced tab, if you go over here to responsive, you guys can actually hide this on mobile. So that means this will not display on mobile. Only Daryl Wilson Real Estate will, and then this section right here, right? And then here we have friendly staff. It looks great, right? We have our listings. You'll see that even the listings are fully mobile optimal, right? So it looks great on the phone, right? And so on and so forth. Everything looks great. So if you guys do add sections or if there's things that you guys add, make sure to go to the tablet and also the mobile portraits just to make sure that you fully optimize it for all devices. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on desktop and then I'll also close this. So I wanna exit the actual mobile builder. Now, once you guys actually make the changes that you guys want, all you gotta do is click on update here at the bottom and all the changes you made to the website are now live. So over here, if I click on view the page, you will now see that this is our new website. So we have Daryl Wilson Real Estate. We have some description. You'll see we have our friendly staff and then we have our rows and everything that we just created. So as you guys can tell, making this website with Elementor is very simple. All you gotta do is go to the websites, you know, add in some elements, get comfortable with the builder, use it for about an hour on your own free time. And after you guys use it, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. So that's how you guys can design the website using the Elementor page builder. And also you guys just have to go to other pages like the About Us page, turn on the builder, right? And then you guys can go ahead and go through every page and then just change it to whatever it is that you want to add to the websites. So for example, under property management, you'll see they're using icon boxes. All I'll do right here is click on property management and then I'll just change this, right? So we are fully ready to do property management and take care of your property. And then you'll see it change, right? And you'll just go through every one right here. You guys can close it, right? Or you can duplicate it, 
right? Now, this is one of the many elements with Elementor. This is called the icon box. So the icon box is actually down here, right? So this is the icon box, right? So on your own free time, just go through a lot of these elements, you know, drag and drop them, get comfortable with them. Like this is, for example, social icons and stuff like that. And, you know, after about a few hours, you guys will be pros, okay? So yeah, on your own free time, feel free to go to these pages, right? And get comfortable and design them. And once you do that, you'll just click on updates and that will save all the changes you made to the actual website. So right here, I'll click on view page and there we go, right? And then also here we have for rent, right? So we have for rent. Now you guys can use Elementor on these pages, but I highly recommend not to because if you guys use Elementor on these pages, many of the times they can break or they can get weird. And that's my general experience with using uh, the page builder on the custom archive pages, right? Now you guys still can add stuff here, right? You can add a little bit more, but as you can tell, you can't edit the listings because this is actually being pulled from the theme. You can't add anything in between the elements. So they are a little restricted on the listing pages, right? But you can still add things right here, okay? So I'll go ahead and view the page, right? We'll fix this a little bit later, don't worry about that. We'll fix this under when we create pages. And then also here are agents. So you guys can't use the builder on the agents pages because this is also a custom archive page, right? So this is actually created by the theme and they don't want you guys using the page builder on that specific parts. Uh, here we have the contact. You guys can also use the page builder on the contact page here as well, right? And then also here we have blog. And also the blog you guys cannot use a builder on because this is actually created by the theme. So let's go over here to the contact page. And I'll turn on the builder really quick. Now, just to be clear, this element right here is the house's contact form. So right here, you'll see email. And this is actually where you guys can adjust like the last name, the first name. Essentially, this is a contact form builder. So for example, I'll add an item, right? And this will be something like, what is your phone number, right? And then here I'll type in phone number, right? Phone number, okay or phone, or home phone, here we go. And then for the placeholder, I'll just put a number, right? And then right here, I can just drag this above email, right? Pretty cool, so there's the phone number, right? And then there's number, right? And then I can just go ahead and update this. Now, if we scroll down, you're gonna see email, right? So you'll see send to, you wanna change this to your specific email. So I'm gonna change this to your email right here. So email, and then for the subject, this is the actual subject of what's going to show in your email inbox. Daryl's real estate website, okay. Also, there's a redirect. That essentially means if they fill out the contact form, it'll automatically redirect them to another page, right? Like a thank you page or something else. But this is optional, you don't have to do that, right? So I'll go ahead and click on update. You guys can build your own contact form on your own free time. You guys can go bonkers and knock yourself out. But let's go ahead now and test out the actual contact form. So right here, Daryl Wilson, 1-800-999, all right. Here I'll put in an email, all right. And then I'll put in a message right here. So hey, great video. Okay, and then I'll click on submit. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and check my email. So I'll go to my Google Chrome here and you guys will see that here is the actual email. So Daryl Wilson Real Estate or Daryl Real Estate Websites. And here we go, right? Great video and all the information displays right there. So you'll see that you guys can get messages directly from your websites. If you guys do have any questions about anything that I've showed you guys, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to help you guys out with anything that you guys need. So another quick tip, um, if you guys are not getting emails from your contact form, this is a very quick fix. I have a video right here that'll show you guys actually how to route emails from your server to emails. So the reason why emails aren't sent all the time from WordPress is because companies like Gmail 
and uh, Proton. They think WordPress is spam, so they try to flag it. So all you have to do is just route those emails correctly from your server to emails and everything will work just fine. I have a whole other video. It's only like a 10 minute video and you guys have already paid for hosting with Hostinger, so it'll work just fine, okay? All right, so now that you guys are getting comfortable with the builder and you know how to use the drag and drop features, now I'll show you guys how to create pages and also assign them to the menu. It's really simple. So uh, let me show you guys how to do that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to create pages and also add them to the menu. We're also gonna talk about the blog as well, and I'll show you guys how to fully integrate the blog. So to create a page, let's first go to the dashboard. So right here, you're gonna see pages, and I'll click on all pages. Now these are all the pages that are created for your websites. Now many of these pages are created automatically when we imported the demo contents. If you wanna see a page, all you gotta do is just click on a page right here. I'll click on view for privacy. And this is like your privacy policy page, right? You'll see that uh, it's just a bunch of demo content and stuff like that. But if you guys do wanna create a page, at the top right here, I'll go to plus new, and then I'll click on page. And let's say for example, you guys want to create a page about your services or your agents, right? So I'll put services, okay. Now right here, you're gonna see page header options. Now this is a theme option that they've integrated here. So we have property slider, revolution slider, property maps, image, video, and elementor. Essentially what they've done here is they've given you guys the option to add in different page headers on your websites. I'm not really sure why they did that, but um, what I'll do here is just put none and click on publish and publish. We'll come back to the page headers in just a bit. So to turn on the page builder, you'll see right here, I'll click on edit with Elementor. And this will allow us to actually use the page builder for this specific page. Now, right away, you're gonna see that we have the services here. If you guys don't want this or you wanna get rid of it, all you gotta do is go over here to settings. And then for the page layout, we're gonna select Elementor full width. That essentially allows us to design the websites. And then here, you guys can just build the website as usual, right? So you can click on the plus, you can add in some boxes here, right? And then here we can go ahead and design the page as usual, right? So I'll throw in this and so on and so forth. So I, th I think at this point, you guys know what's up, right? You guys know what to do, right? So I'll just go ahead and click on updates. But next I wanna show you guys something that actually might help you all out. Right here, I'm gonna click on the About Us page. And what I wanna do here is I actually wanna build off this. You know, I wanna take all the work they've done and I actually wanna apply it to our other page. So I'm gonna click on edit with Elementor really quick. And I'm gonna show you guys how to actually save sections onto your actual library. So down here, you're gonna see save options. I wanna save this page as a template. And this is gonna be like our primary templates. The reason why this is our primary template is because it carries the same design scheme. You guys will see that I have other ones that I've already used, right? So I'm gonna close this and let's go back and click on exits. Here, I'll click on decide later. And then I'll go back to the WordPress logo. So we actually created the page, right? And the page was the, so services. Here, I'll click on view. Now I'll click on edit with Elementor. Okay. Now, essentially, instead of doing all this from scratch, what I wanna do here is I actually just want to use that template. So I'll click on add a template go to my templates, and then here we have our primary templates. So I'll insert this, and then I'll also apply the settings. Okay, so you'll see the template has imported, right? We have our team, we have our blog, and you guys can basically build off this, right? Now over here, I'll click on this, we're gonna add some space right here, right? So it is a little, this is a little weird, right? Sometimes the builder might get a little wacky, but uh, that's okay. And then here I'll click on update, and here we go. So now you'll see that we're building off of our templates. And I think this actually is a lot better to work with than what we're working with before, right? So we have the structure, we have the style, and then we can add in stuff here and adjust it. Now let's go ahead and talk about the headers. So right here, I'll click on edit page. So here we have header type. Now for this specific theme, you guys can have specific header options. So here I have a property slider. Let's just take a look at what that does. I'll add the property slider, I'll view the page, and now we have this beautiful property slider onto this specific page. 
right? And then below that, we have our original content. And we can keep going through the other ones and just check out you know, which one works for you. And then they also have an integration for Revolution Slider where you guys can create sliders from scratch, but I'm not gonna cover that, right? Here we have the property maps. Uh, I'll select Los Angeles, right? We will do the locations a little bit later, but for now, just wanna get you guys comfortable with the actual builder and how to make pages. And here we have a map, right? So people can actually you know, say, oh yeah, there's this property. Okay, cool, where's that? And they can go directly here. Now this is optional, right? And then we have our content here at the bottom. And then there's one other option I do wanna talk about and that's the advanced search. So I don't want the advanced search on this page. So for the custom settings, I'm just gonna hide on this page, right? Because uh, I don't really want a search bar, right? I mean, do you guys want a search bar on the services page? Like, eh, not really. So over here, I'll click on view page and then you'll see that search bar is gone, right? So that is what the options were referring to earlier with regarding to the header and also the search bar. So this is how you guys can create pages and then also adjust the theme options to add in specific headers for any of your pages. Now, I did mention earlier about this right here, right? Remember I told you guys we'll come back to it? Well, this is showing like this because it's using a plugin that we don't have any templates for. So we're gonna scroll down right here and under page header options, we are now just gonna put none, right? Because we don't have any templates for Slider Revolution. So we're just going to click on none, click on updates, and then view the page. Okay, and it's gone, right? And it's gone from South Park. You guys remember that? Okay. All right, and then we'll do the same thing here, right? But we can get a little bit creative here, guys. You know, instead of actually just putting nothing, maybe we can add in like the map or something, right? you know, property map, right? And then here, I'll go ahead and just select all these, right? And click on update. Let's just see what this does. You know, I don't know, we'll find out right now, you know, like, let's just take a look. Okay, so yeah, we got a map, right? Here we have seven properties, right? And they can actually view these properties here, right? You know, if you guys wanna go this route, you guys can add this, but if you don't, you can just take it off. And then here are all the listings. Now, these header options display for all of your pages. So you guys can choose to have specific custom header options on any pages that you guys choose, which is actually kind of cool, you know, it, it is pretty cool. But I do like this property slider. You know, I think property slider was a little bit more elegant. I did like that look. So let's just take a look here at the uh, property slider. And I, I do like this a lot more actually. I think this is very unique, it's engaging. And then here we have more properties at the bottom, all right? So that is how you guys can pretty much create pages, how you guys can adjust those other pages. But now let me show you guys how to add it to the menu, right? So we have our menu here, but we need to add it to the menu. So let's do that. Let's go over here to dashboard. Under appearance, we're now gonna find menus, okay? And for the menu, we're gonna select the main menu and then click on select. Now for pages, I'll click on view all and we're gonna find that services page that we created. Remember services? Yep, services with Elementor. And I'm gonna add this to the menu, okay? Now, you guys can also add in custom links. For example, here we have custom link, right? Maybe this is like a Facebook group, even though I hate Facebook groups. Here we go. You guys are my group, you know, don't take that personal, guys. It's just, you know, Facebook groups are kind of dying, you know? So let's just say this is like my Daryl Wilson group, right? And then I'll just put Facebook here, Facebook group. Okay, you guys can also add in custom links. So essentially, this is a link to anything. You can link them to your TikTok, to your Twitter, to your cat's Instagram, to, to wherever you wanna go, right? And then I'll here, I'll click on Save Menu. Now, if you guys wanna create something like a drop-down menu right here under Agents, I'll drag this down under About Us. And now this is a sub-item under About Us. Okay, so I'll click on Save Menu. And let's just take a look at our website and see what we've done. All right, so we have the home, the about us, we have the drop down menu for rent, for sale, blog. Here is our services page. And then also here is our Facebook group. So let's first click on services and voila, it brings them right to our services page. And then for the Facebook group, if this was a Facebook group, it would just take them to the Facebook group where they can like and comment and talk all about your real estates, right? So pretty cool. So that's how you guys can create a menu and also add the pages to the menu. 
You guys can also access the menu by going over here and clicking on menus, right? It's the same thing, right? In fact, I'm going to rearrange this. So I'll put this under here and the Facebook group under there and then click on save and we're good. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the blog, right? So here we have the blog. So how do you create posts for this specific blog? Well, let me show you guys. Now, the first thing that we have to do is go to the customizer and make sure we assign the blog page. So over here in our homepage settings, you do wanna make sure that the blog page is under the post page. This essentially means every time you guys create a post, it'll display right here, okay? So let's go back to our dashboard and I'll show you guys how to create posts. So over here we have posts. And this is essentially the same exact thing as pages, right? The first thing I wanna do is get rid of this ugly hello world one. You know, we gotta get rid of that. Now these are all just demo content posts, right? So if I click on view right here, it's just gonna show the post, right? And some demo content and so on and so forth, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this really quick. There we go. Okay, I'll use this for later, okay? So let's go back to dashboard and for posts, all posts. Here, I'll click on add a new post. And we're gonna give this post a title, like 10 best areas to invest in real estate. Now that sounds like an amazing title, right? And here you guys can just go ahead and blog away. Now this uses a specific builder called Gutenberg. And Gutenberg is the default editor with WordPress. So for example, you'll see up here in the plus, you have these blocks. You have text, you have images, you have quotes, you have media, video, audio, and all these different type of elements you can add to your post. But I think the most important one is just adding in text. So you guys can just type it in, press enter. Also a quick shortcut is you guys can type in dash and this will actually pull up something really quick like image, you know, media library, and then just throw in like an image for your blog post, right? Make sense, okay. And if I want to get rid of this, I will click on the dots and delete it, okay? So at this point, I'll just go ahead and just throw in my demo content, right? Here we have our dummy content, right? We have our images, right? And I'm not really gonna go too far into the builder, guys, but I think you guys can understand how to use this just by fiddling with it. I don't think you guys were that, you know, dumb. <laughs> you know, I think you guys can do this. I, I trust you guys, right? Now over here under post, uh, we do need to add a featured image though. So right here under featured image, we'll put in a property, right? Or uh, here we go, an image, right? And one important thing is categories. You guys should always add in categories. Here they've already created categories for us, but if you do wanna create a new category, like here I'll put one for investments, I'll throw in that one right there, and then add a new category, all right? So this is essentially is adding in posts to categories, and all the posts, under these categories will display when someone clicks on category. Let me show you guys, all right? So I'll go ahead and publish this post now, right? Publish and publish and voila. We have our post right here, the 10 best areas to invest in real estate. And then we have our demo content right here, right? Very simple, right? And then we have Daryl Wilson 03, I love hiking and people can comment on your post. Really, really cool, right? Now also here, if they click on the investment category, this will display all of the posts that are in the investment category. But we'll only have one, right? So any more that you guys create will be displayed right here. So that's how you guys can create blogs and also how to create a blog post for your website. All right, party people, now that you guys are professional designing the websites, now let's talk about page templates and also widgets. So with the houses theme, page templates work by creating a page for a specific section. For example, there is a page for the compare page and there's also a page for the search results page. The thing is, you need to assign those pages in the page template section, which I'll show you guys how to do in this very next section. Also, there is widgets. If you guys notice on the search results page and the blog page, there's those sidebars with those little icons and stuff like that. You can adjust the widgets there and I'll show you guys how to do that also in the section of the video. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump to the page templates and the widgets section. Let's go back to the video. All right, so in this part of the video, we're gonna be talking about page templates and also widgets. You guys might've noticed that if you click on search, uh, you're brought to this page. Now I'll show you guys how to actually propagate pages and also how to adjust these widgets here on the left side. You'll see that we have like archives and categories and then there's like this apartments, right? Where you can actually click on apartments. The same thing applies to your blog. You guys might've noticed there's this 
area on the right side where there's just widgets here and I'll show you guys where those are and how to adjust these. So let's go to our home page. Now, one thing I do also want to show you guys is the page templates. So first, let me show you guys the page templates before we go on to the widgets. Now here, I'll click on search. Now, right here, you'll see that we have this compare option. I showed you guys this previously earlier, remember? Here, I'll click on compare. Notice here how we have this compare templates, right? Now, this page is being propagated using the page templates. For example, here, I'll click on edit page. And what I'm going to do here, just to help you guys understand what I'm doing, is I'm going to delete this page. So I'll click on move to trash. Okay. Now, if I go over here and I try the same thing, something's going to change. So I'll click on search. And if I decide to actually compare properties again and click on compare, you guys will see nothing happens. Nothing happens because we deleted the page templates for compare properties. So let me show you guys how it's to create page templates. So up here under plus new, let's click on page. Now right here, you're going to see template on the right side. Template is actually integrated from within the theme. And these are actually pages that are propagated from the actual theme. For example, you'll see here how there is a reset passwords page. Now, if you don't have a reset password page templates, nothing will display for the user. The same thing for compare properties, right? We just deleted our compare properties. So we need to actually create a page template for that. So this will be like compare properties. And under templates, under the default templates, I will now select compare properties, right? And then I'll click on publish and publish. So I'll click on update for the compare properties. And then I will click on view page. And voila, you guys will now see that the compare property pages show up. Now I do recommend for a lot of these post template pages, I recommend not to use Elementor on them because they can get very glitchy and get very weird. Now, if you try to actually go to the compare page, you will now see that compare property shows up. So next let's talk about the CRM. So over here, I'll go ahead and click on the dashboard. And this is the CRM for houses. I did show you guys this earlier in the video. And this is where your real estate agents can take a look at a lot of their information, like their leads, right? So you'll see here, if someone sends them a contact info, uh, they can go ahead and get information about that. They can also view inquiries. They can view insights, right? So you'll see that uh, they got some analytics right here. They can also see a list of all their properties. And over here, they can view the stats for their property, right? And then we have save search, my profile, and so on and so forth. You'll see that there is no option for add a listing. That's because we don't have the page created for add a listing. For this specific page template, they did not include it. So we can make one you know, from scratch, right? So over here, plus new, page. And this will be create a listing, right? Now, later in the video, we'll talk about how to let agents create a listing, but I just wanna show you guys how to actually create those templates just in case they don't propagate for you or you guys use a te another template that it doesn't showcase, right? So over here, we're gonna find the create a listing page, right? So we have the create a listing page, right? Let's go ahead and find it. Wait, 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 wait. it's here somewhere. Oh, wait, 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 here we go. Uh, user profile, all right, I'm getting warm. There it is, create listing. <laughs> okay, good, I found it, all right, cool. And I'll go ahead now and publish this and I'll publish this, right? Okay, and I'll click on view the page. All right, so now you'll see here on the dashboard that there is now, whoops. <laughs> My bad, I gotta get used to that guys, I'm sorry. So now you'll see under here under the dashboard, there's now a create a listing section. And this is where users can actually create their own listing, right? And they can select different post types, which we'll do in the very next section, okay? So now let's say for example, right, we have our search, right? But let's say for example, something happened to your search bar, right? So you'll see right here, if I click on edit page, that's under the template, this is the search results page. So if this does not propagate for you, or if it's not working, that's probably because you either deleted your search results page or it never showcased. So just to demonstrate here, I will move this to trash, right? And after I move it to trash, if we go over here and we try to search for something, you're gonna find out that it doesn't take you anywhere because we deleted the page template for the search results page, right? So we have to create it, right? So over here, plus new page, and this is gonna be the search results page, okay? 
And then for the templates, we're gonna find the search results, right? Search results, or yeah, search results. Okay, and then publish and publish. And also for the search results page, guys, we can actually add a header to it if you guys wanna add like a map or if you wanna add some sort of properties map or something like we did earlier, you guys can also add specific headers to any other archive page. But I do not recommend to use Elementor. I know you can, it will let you, but I've just discovered that uh, it gets a little glitchy, right? So here's the search results page. And now if I go to search, you'll see that the search results page now propagates. So if parts of the website don't propagate, that's because you need to create the actual a page template here in order for them to propagate. Later on, we'll be talking about like login and register and packages, and then also payment pages. These pages must be propagated if you want users to pay you on your websites. Of course, if they wanna list something, you wanna charge a fee, they must be propagated or else they cannot uh, pay you, right? So that is pretty much it for the page templates. Here, I'll click on update under the search results. All right, so now let me show you guys how to add specific widgets on your websites. So right here, if I go to the search results page, you guys will notice that we have these widgets. Now, later in the video, I will show you guys how to customize the search results page where you can have a full page, where you can have half a map. But for now, let me just show you guys how to assign specific widgets on your search results page. Also for the blog, you guys also notice here that there are these widgets here on the right side and we can't really customize it with the builder. So we need to do that with widgets. So first let's go ahead and go back to the search. And what I wanna do now is I wanna open up a second tab, okay? Now what I wanna do here is I'm gonna go back to dashboard and we're going to go to the widget section. Now over here under appearance, you'll see widgets. So let's go ahead and click on widgets. Okay, I'm gonna close this. Now these widgets are actually referring to different parts of the websites. For example, the default sidebar, this is actually referring to your actual post page. If we go over here to the blog and we see search and recent posts, you will see this also displays the same thing, right? We have the search and we also have recent posts. We also have recent comments as well. Now, if you guys do wanna delete this, all you gotta do is click on the element and press the delete button on your keyboard. Same thing right here. I'll get rid of this search comments, right? Because that's just a heading text. Now, let's say you guys wanna add something, right? Here on the plus widgets, you'll see that we can add something here, right? And these are the same widgets from the actual page builder, Gutenberg. However, there are specific elements from the houses theme that we can also add in here. For example, here we have the houses. Let's see, we got contact us. We have recent properties, right? Let's do recent properties, right? We'll also do a signup form, right? So here we got the properties, right? We have a newsletter signup form. Now this actually uses MailChimp. So you guys may want to connect this with your MailChimp accounts. If you guys don't have one, you guys can sign up for free. It's really simple. And then you guys can just go ahead and integrate the MailChimp onto your websites. Here I'll click on the plus again. Let's see what else we got here under the houses, right? We have featured properties. Uh, what about for the blog? Do we have anything for the blog? That's, that's uh, you know, let me see what we can do here. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, you know. So we've got recent posts, right? We have properties and uh, yeah, so you guys get it. But for the blog search, I might wanna put this to the top, right? So for blog search, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna move it up and up and up and up one more time. And this one, I'm gonna delete this one. I don't know what this is, I'm gonna get rid of it. So I'm gonna click on these little dots, click on delete, okay? So now we have blog search, recent post, properties, and then we have a newsletter, right? Okay. And then here we have topics. Here we have a calendar. I'm gonna delete this calendar, guys. I don't really want the calendar. We're gonna get rid of archives and also get rid of recent comments, okay? But we'll leave the tags, okay? And then I'll click on update. All right, now let's go back over here and I'm gonna refresh the page. All right, and then you'll see this has changed, right? We got blog search, recent post, properties, now here is the newsletter and you guys will need to integrate your MailChimp API if you guys want to do this. I do have another video on MailChimp, but I'm not gonna go to MailChimp, make an account, but that's gonna derail the entire tutorial. So uh, I'll leave that video in the description if you guys do wanna check out how to integrate your newsletter with this theme. Here we have topics and also tags, right? So as you can tell, right, setting up widgets is pretty simple. Now I'm gonna collapse this. 
All right, so here is the other ones that we can add, but let's go over here and let's find the search results page, right? So here, I'll click on search. And now we're going to design this page and adjust these widgets here on the left side. We're gonna to go to the search sidebar, right? And here we have archives. We don't need archives, so we're gonna get rid of archives, right? And we're also gonna get rid of this heading text. Same thing, we're gonna get rid of this heading text and then also we're going to delete these right here. So we do have apartments, right? And we can add in more widgets, right? So right here, we're gonna add a block, browse some, and then we're gonna find, I don't know, what should we add here, guys? We have agent search, featured properties, how about that? Featured properties, right? And we'll show this as a slider or a list. Ooh, I like the slider, let's do the slider, okay? And we're also, yeah, there you go, okay. Yeah, this widget thing does get a little glitchy. If I click away, you'll see that uh, this is what it looks like, right? But uh, yeah. All right, so we got our little widget there, okay? We have our apartments and we can add in more, right? Recent viewed properties, that's actually cool. So if someone clicks on a property, it will remind them in the search results section. So I'll go ahead and update this. Now over here, I'm gonna refresh this page and look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is. I love this, it looks fantastic. And users can, you know, adjust it. We have our apartments on the left side. We have our properties and everything looks great. So that's how you guys can add widgets to your search results pages and also to your blog page. All right, so now that we covered the widgets, now let's move on to the more complicated topics, which is how to create listings and also custom fields. Now we're gonna talk about custom fields and listings and all sorts of different categories now. Over here, you guys will see that there is for rent, for sale, there's different cities. And then also we have like the search bar where they can search for things. If you guys notice right here, you're gonna see that there's specific categories and fields like single family home, apartments, and everything that you guys have seen that are in categories, that's what we're gonna cover right now in this section of the video. So let's do it. Let's go over here to dashboard and I'll walk you guys through how to do this. So on the left side, you're gonna see real estate. Now real estate controls all of the aspects about your properties. So right here, I'll first click on properties. Okay, so here's a list of all of the available properties, right? We have the title of the property, we have information about the property, price, and then the status. Now right here, you're gonna see the type, right? So on the left side, we have type. So this is a single family home. So before we actually create properties, we first need to create types, statuses, features, and labels, and then obviously country, state, and city. So let's go through this one by one. The first one is gonna be type. And for example, type is something like what type of property? So here we have apartments, lofts, single family homes, or villas, right? If you guys want to add more, all you gotta do is put it in right here. So over here, I'll put commercial, right? Maybe you guys are renting out commercial properties, right? So commercial, right? And then at the bottom, I'll go ahead and click on add a new type. Now you guys can also create subcategories for your main categories. For example, right here, I'll put in something like small business, right? Because maybe small business relates to commercial, right? Not like a big business, but just like a small business, right? And then for the parent category, I'll put commercial. I'll scroll to the bottom and click on add a new type. So now you'll see that small business is under commercial. And then for the commercial, let's say they need like a big building, right? Like a, like a skyscraper, we'll put enterprise, right? And then we'll also put that under type, okay? So just remember that type is referring to what type of property are you listing and you can create the categories right here, okay? Now, the next thing that we have is status. Status is pretty simple, right? So what is the status of the actual property? Is this for rent? Is this for sale? Is this in foreclosure? We can add in one more right here. And this will be something like auction. Maybe this is going through an auction, right? Or pre-auction, right? We'll, we'll put pre-auction. Pre-auction, and then click on add new status. Now, if you guys do wanna get rid of some of these, what I'll do is I'll click on these, right? And uh, I'll go ahead and click on these. And then under bulk actions, we can click on delete and just get rid of those categories, right? So now we only have these to choose from. Okay, makes sense? You guys with me? All right, cool. Let's go to the next one. So now we have features. And these are features that you guys can add about the property. So you can put something like air conditioning, barbecue, dryer, gym, right? And so on and so forth. 
Um, I think another one that we could probably add here is like like swimming pool, right? Oh no, they have swimming pool right here. Yeah, swimming pool right here, <laughs> okay? So you guys can add specific features about the actual property. So that is features, right? So you guys can add in features and then you guys can add these when we actually create listings. So you need to make sure that you have these available before we create listings. Got that? Okay. Next, we're going to click on labels. Now, labels are essentially labels here on the actual property, like this one right here, featured, right? You can add labels, right? Like hot sale. Hot sale. We'll also add in like reduced price. Reduced price. These are essentially labels that you can apply on properties, right? Quick sale, all right? Quick sale, okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is over here under the real estates, we're now going to click on country, right? So if you guys do want a country, you can add it here, but you know, I don't think people actually sell properties internationally. Maybe there is a, a website, but uh, I, I think mostly for real estate agents, you're not gonna have a country, right? Because everyone knows you're only gonna sell properties from within your own country, but you can add them here if you choose to add it, and then you can apply these in the search filter later, okay? But uh, to be reasonable, I'm just going to skip countries and I think maybe states is a little bit more reasonable. So over here, I'll put Nevada, okay. Nevada, California, okay. And then also New York, right? So this is if you guys are selling properties in various states, which some of you might actually be doing that. So here we go, we have some different areas, right? And now that we have these states, now let's go ahead and go to city. All right, so now we're going to list available cities, right? So for example, so I'm gonna add in Las Vegas, right? But before I add in Las Vegas and publish this, I also want to connect it to Nevada, right? Because Las Vegas is inside Nevada, right? So you need to make sure that you actually assign the actual city in the state for the search filter results. So it's more accurate, okay? Here, I'll click on add a new city, right? And then you'll see the country state it propagates, right? Now for Los Angeles, I might wanna put this inside of California, right? Okay, so I'll edit that and then I'll update that. Okay, I'll go back to categories and then you'll do the same thing for the other states. Now Miami is in Florida, right? So you might want to create Florida and then add that in there. So for Las Vegas, we have Nevada, right? But maybe also we have properties in Reno, right? So I'm gonna put Reno here and then I'm also going to assign this in Nevada. All right. And then I'll add a new city over here, like San Francisco, and then I'll apply this to California, right? And then over here for New York, we also need to apply New York to New York. Now there is a city in New York called New York. So you guys can go ahead and assign your specific cities. Now let's go ahead and go to the next section here. And this is area, right? Now area is if you want to get very, very specific, okay? So for example, I'm first going to delete all these, right? Here I'll put like the Bronx, right? And the Bronx is a specific area in New York, okay? So what I'll do over here is I'll put New York, right? For the actual city, and then click on add new area, right? Also in California, in Los Angeles, there is a small city called Santa Clarita. That's where I grew up. Essentially, it's an area within a city. And this is going to be inside of Los Angeles, right? And the same thing for Las Vegas. Now there is a city called Enterprise and also Summerlin, you know? So here I'll put, I'll put Enterprise. And this is going to be inside of Las Vegas, right? And then also Summerlin, which is a very popular area in Las Vegas, right? So I'll put Summerlin and this also is in Las Vegas, okay? All right, so just to be clear here, we have two cities in Las Vegas. We have one area in Los Angeles, and then we have the Bronx in New York. And I think that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, so I think that's good, okay? So yeah, that is pretty much how you guys can add specific areas inside of the actual cities to be very precise about your location. Okay, so let's keep going here. All right, so we've done agencies, we've done agents, we've done partners. Here we have reviews. Now I do wanna give you guys a quick tip about the types and stuff like that. 
Now, most people are probably not gonna use the country and the state, right? If you are an agent and you have multiple properties in multiple states, then you should use states, right? But if you guys are just an agent with one specific area, it just makes sense to just put the cities and not put countries and not put states because obviously you're an agent in one specific state, right? So when using this, um, you know, when creating the states and countries, you don't have to make states, you don't have to do countries, you can just skip that and have users search only by specific cities or areas. Okay, just want you guys to know that. Let's go ahead and go back to the video. We're first going to delete all these reviews, right? Move these to trash. You guys can actually create your own reviews if you guys want to go that route. Amazing property. And then this is an amazing. Now this is if you guys just want to generate your own fake reviews or you can ask someone for a review and then you can create it for them, right? So right here, five star. Now the next thing is where are you going to apply this review? So we have agent where you can apply it to Daryl Wilson, right? You can apply it to a specific property, right? If you want to add reviews to a property, you can also add one to the agency, right? Like we created earlier, remember? Daryl Wilson Real Estate, or you guys can do it to a blogger, right? So yeah, this is the only blogger we have at the moment, but I'll assign this to Daryl Wilson and uh, we can go ahead and publish this review. All right, so essentially what you're doing here is you're just generating uh, reviews for your websites. You know, I'm not going to say it's good or bad. If you want to make fake reviews, do whatever you want. I'm just the middle guy here. You know, I'm just telling you guys how to do this, right? So over here under our agents, uh, I'll go ahead and click on Daryl Wilson and you'll see there's a review right here, right? And I'll click on view all reviews. And this is an amazing property review. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, so that is what reviews are. And you guys might want to delete these other reviews right here. So I'm going to delete these reviews, right? Move these to trash. Now we can disable reviews, but that's in the theme customizer options, which is the very next section, right? So I'll show you guys how to disable reviews in case you do not want them on your website, right? This right here is packages. This is essentially if you guys do want to charge people to create listings on your websites. But um, we'll come back to this a little bit later. It's very simple. So over here, we also have invoices. And if you guys do have people pay on your website, it will display right here under invoices. So that is the whole real estate section right here. So we added in all of the labels, the agents, the city. So we are pretty much done with this entire tab. Now, the very next thing that we're gonna do is we're now gonna create a property, right? So let's do it. Over here, add a new property. So let me walk you guys through how to create listings for your websites. And after you guys learn how to create one listing, obviously you guys can create many more on your own. Now, the first thing is the title. Now this is gonna be the address of your actual property. So mine is 506 Taylor Way. The next section right here is the description of the actual property. For example, if you guys go to Zillow.com and you scroll down, if you see right here, this section here is the description, right? So we're gonna enter now description for the actual property. On our demo website, it's going to display right here under the description. So this would be something to describe the actual property. Obviously there's various ways on how to approach this, but I'm just gonna enter in just some demo contents to describe the actual property. Okay, but we'll clean this up a little bit. You know, we'll make it look a little more nicer and structured. And so you'll go ahead and put in the actual description of the actual property. Below that, we have information about the property. So you'll see here we have property and then we have various tabs. Now these various tabs are basically information about the actual property. You can also design the actual layout from here. You can add in private notes, energy class, and a little bit more information about the property. So let's go through each tab one by one and just fill this out. So the first thing is the actual price of the house. How much does the house cost? Well, $700,000, right? The next is the price prefix. For example, here they put started from. This will display right in front of the price. So you can put like our price or discounted price or for builders, they actually do put starting from if there's upgrades available. So I'll put our price, right? Our price. Now the second price is optional. This will actually display right here. You can use their example of square footage or you can put this as a discounted or something else. For example, I'll put discounted. So I'll put 800,000 and then after the price, I'll put discounted. Essentially, it's going to tell people that it was discounted, right? The next is the area size. So how large is this house? Now keep in mind, this is only the house, right? Not the yard. So I'm gonna put 3,000 square feet over here, square feet. 
The land area is how large is the actual land itself? Usually, you know, it's a little bit larger than the house, so it's gonna be 4,000 square feet, right? Here I'll put square feet as well. So the next we have bedrooms. I'll put five bedrooms and number of rooms. I'll probably put just maybe like, I don't know, eight. Bathrooms, we'll put two. Garages, we'll put one. The garage size, here I'll put maybe 250 square feet. The year built, I'll put 2016. And then for property ID, you guys can create your own property ID for your own internal information. So I'll put 8Z99. Okay, now this area, the, inf the property information will display below your property. So if we scroll down, you're gonna see details right here. Now you guys can readjust this later on in the video, but it'll propagate here and display the information about the actual property, okay? So if we keep scrolling down here, we now have additional features. So next we have additional features, and this would be more information about the actual property. For example, over here on the demo website, you'll see that we have a deposit of 20%. Essentially, they must put down 20% in order to purchase the house. We give more information about the pool size, the last remodeled, uh, additional rooms, equipment, and then also a credit score. So I'm telling them you need to have at least a 720 credit score or better in order to purchase the property. So over here, I'll just throw in some you know, deposit, 30%. I'll add more, a credit score. Okay, so that is the information about the actual property. Next, let's go ahead and click on map. So the next is the map section. So here we can show or we can hide the map. Later on in this video, we will integrate Google Maps API, but for now we can use the default open street map to display the property. So I'll go ahead and put in the property address here. So I just entered in like a random address here. So the next thing is property settings. So the next is the property address. So you'll go ahead and put the street address and also the zip code. You have the option to make this property featured, right? And this is actually saying, do you need to be logged into the website in order to view the property? I'll go ahead and select no. You can also add a disclaimer here if you guys do wanna add any disclaimer about the property. Next, we have the media. So you guys will go ahead and upload the images that represent the actual property. So I'll go ahead and click on add media. Of course, up here under the upload files, you guys will click on select files. And this is where you guys can upload all of the files to the website. But since we don't have any, I'll just go to the media library and then just upload a few images. All right, so I went ahead and I uploaded my properties. And also right here, I'm gonna add a video URL. So I'm gonna add a YouTube video. This will actually display on the actual property so people can actually see this through a YouTube video. The next one is 360 virtual tour. Now, I don't really know how to embed virtual tours, but there is a company that you guys can use. This is matterport.com. They actually create these kind of maps for real estate agents. And what you guys can do is just contact them. They have a phone number on their websites and you guys can give them a phone call if you guys want you know, help with uh, designs or um, you know, 360 maps. You'll see here they do a really good job at it. And these guys can definitely help you out with the 3D maps or any sort of maps for your real estate websites. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip this one, but I'll go ahead and leave that website in the description below of this video if you guys do wanna check them out. Next, we have contact information. So who is displaying this actual property? Here we have the agent info. Here we can actually select an agent. Remember earlier how we created the agent Daryl Wilson? Well, now you can assign those agents to this specific property. You can also choose agency info. So if you want a specific agency to actually represent this property, you guys can do that. So you can do, you know, agency, agent, or just do not display. But I'll go ahead and put Daryl Wilson. The next tab is slider. So if you guys do want a custom slider, you guys can add it here. But honestly, guys, it doesn't look good and I would not recommend to use the slider. So I'm just gonna skip the slider. It just showcases an image above the actual property, which is not really that helpful. So next we have sub listings, and this is going to recommend other properties if users are viewing a specific property. But this is actually a depreciated option because now there is similar listings and this will display below all of your properties. So you'll see that it recommends all these other properties when people are currently viewing uh, this specific property right here. So it is a depreciated option and I would actually skip sub listings. Next we have floor plan. So with floor plans, you guys can actually create a little bit more information about every single floor on your property. For example, over here, you'll see there's floor plans and we have the first floor and the second floor. 
if I click on the first floor, you'll see that, you know, we have some square footage dimensions here for the bed, for the bath, and then you can add a price if you want, but that doesn't make much sense. So you can skip the price if you want. Then you can upload an image as well and then add in description about every single floor. Okay, so I just put in some basic info, like how large is the first floor? I just put, oh, there's three bedrooms, two baths on the first floor. And then you can actually add more here and then add like the second floor and so on and so forth. The next is property documents. If you guys do want users to actually download documentation for the property, you guys can upload that documentation here. This would be something like if someone died in the property or if there's a lien on the property or if their tax is owed, something that you want users to know before they purchase the property, you guys can upload those documents right here. Okay, and the next is private note. This is something internal for your team. So need to sell fast. Okay, and only team members will be able to see this. Next is energy class. If you guys do wanna add a specific energy class to your property or let them know what kind of energy the house uses, you can enter this here. I'm not really sure what this is. Maybe if you're a realtor, you know, but I have no idea. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, that that's what that is. So next we have layouts. And here you guys can adjust the layout of how the actual property is structured. This is actually using layout six. So you guys can actually go here and adjust the layout. We'll come back to this in just a bit. So let's just go ahead and skip this for now. So this here is a depreciated option and no longer works. All right, so that is pretty much it for the property section right here. So we went through all of these tabs. Now there is another important option that we need to add and that is the category and also the image. On the right side up here, you'll click on property. If we scroll down, you're now gonna see that we have those types. Remember earlier how we created types and features and status and all this other information? Now we can apply this to this specific property. So for example, I'll go ahead and say this is a single family home. And uh, this is also commercial, why not? <laughs> you know, whatever, it's a small business house, you know, maybe, I don't know, whatever, right? So you can add the type here, okay? And then for status, is this for rent? Is this for sale? Is this, um, you know, reduced price? We can go ahead and enter those here. So I'll put for sale and also reduce price. Next, we have the features. So we can actually go ahead and select the features for the actual property, right? I'll go ahead and say, all right, it has all this stuff, you know, uh, a washer, TV cable, hopefully no septic tank, right? All right. And then here we have labels. Now labels will be here at the top right here. So you'll see this is featured and for sale, right? So we'll just go ahead and put hot sale, reduced price. We're gonna skip country because we're not gonna tell people this is in America. Obviously we're a realtor in Las Vegas, so we don't need to tell them that. So we're just going to skip that and go to states. And then for city, I'll put this is in Las Vegas. And below that we have the area. So I'll go ahead and select Summerlin. Now, right here, if I click on add new area, you guys can always add in more areas as you go. So if you did forget, you know, it's like no problem. You can just go ahead and add it in here, right? Maybe this is in the city of North Las Vegas or something, right? And then I'll add this. Okay. All right, there we go. And if we keep scrolling down, now this is very important. This is the featured image. So this is the actual image that represents the actual property. For example, you'll see that we have these images right here. So this is where the featured image will show. So it's very important that you add a featured image that represents the actual property. All right, so I'll go ahead and select a featured image. All right, I'll go ahead and select this one here and then click on set featured image. Next, we have excerpt, and this is pretty much only for blog posts. So we don't need to use this so we can skip the excerpt. We can also skip page attributes. This is not for property. So next you can set property expiration. So you can turn this on. And let's say, you know, I want this to expire in October, right? Now I'm gonna take this right here and, and move it because I can't really see it. There we go, okay. Or right, let's see, it was it was there. All right, all right, whatever. We'll just put the 30th, right? And then you can go ahead and select like the minute and the hour and so on and so forth, okay? This is slider revolution. We don't need to worry about this. And I think that is pretty much it. So now let's go ahead and publish this property and see what we got. I'll click on publish and publish. All right, now I'll click on view property. And look at that, we now have the beautiful listing right here. So let's go through this and explain how these propagated, right? So we have the actual title, right? We have our price, 700,000 and 800,000 was discounted. So you'll see over here that the 700,000 is for the sale. And here is the second price and then also after the price. So the next is the status and also the type, right? So we have featured, for sale, hot sale. Over here we have for sale. 
and it also will display the actual labels right here. So we can add in more like, you know, quick sale and we can update that and that'll add more labels, right? So next we have the secondary address. You guys can choose to always get rid of this or hide it. This is actually available right here under the map section. So you'll see here that this is the address. And if I go ahead and delete that and update it, you'll see it disappears. So I think maybe this is better, right? Now we'll go ahead and keep scrolling down here. We have the images that we uploaded and users can actually go ahead and scroll through these and they can contact the agent. They can favorite it and they can also share it. They can also send Daryl a message and also call him right here. We'll go ahead and scroll down here and then we'll look at the property info. So here you'll see we have the small business, commercial, single family home, and this is the property type, right? All right here. They added more information like bedrooms, baths, garage, and also this can be found in the information section right here. So beds, we have the bathrooms and then the garages. If we scroll down, you'll see this is the description. Now later on, we can actually mix and match these elements. We can move them around, right? So here is the description. Below that, we have the address. So 5067 Taylor Way. You'll see we have the zip code, the city, the area, and the state county, okay? And then there's a map. And if we scroll down, we now have details. So here is the details where it displays the beds, the baths, property size, and all the information that we entered right here under information will be displayed right here. We also have the additional details. Remember we have credit score, deposits, the pool size. Below that we have the features. So all the features that we added in will be displayed here. We also have a mortgage calculator. Now, again, later in the video, we will go ahead and show you guys how to uh, delete this or add in elements. But uh, for now, you know, here's the calculator, right? So we can go ahead and use this to see if we're qualified. The next we have floor plans. So you'll see here that we have the floor plan. And below that we have the video. So people can actually just click on this, take a look at the actual property. And uh, yeah, that's always cool. Here is the what's nearby. Later on in the video, we can always integrate a Yelp API if you guys wanna go that route. And then lastly, we have the contact information about the actual agents where they can get more information about the property. And lastly, we have similar listings. So if they are looking at one property, you might want to recommend others. And similar listings will be displayed here at the bottom of the listing. And also I wanna show you guys here at the top, users can actually click on these tabs here at the top right here, and they can just scroll to any section in a really nice clean format. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the top. Now let's talk about how to change this actual layout. So over here under property, remember how we talked about layout? Here's where you guys can adjust the property type. So for example, I'll put version one and click on updates. Now, if I go over here and I refresh the page, it's going to readjust the layout. So you'll see that it changes the actual header layouts. And then here is the description and everything else. Now we can also change this section below that. So over here, you'll see that property content layout also has different styles as well. We have defaults or we have tabs and you guys can mix and match this. So the property top type will control the actual top right here, right? and the content will actually change the content layouts. So now let's refresh the page. And you'll see now, instead of actually having users having to scroll, it just puts them in tabs right here where they can go ahead and just check everything out like that. Okay, and then over here, we'll do something else like minimal. And let's change this to version three, right? So you guys can mix and match, right? You can change the top and then also you can change the content layout as well. So over here, I'll refresh the page. And then you'll see we have this new layout right here where users can actually scroll here through the properties, right? And then below that, we now have this new minimal style, right? So it actually gets rid of the box shadow and it displays it in a specific format, right? So that's pretty cool. So yeah, on your own free time, you guys can go mix and match through these properties. These do say global here at the top and that's because the theme options are setting that globally. We will talk more about the global options when we talk about the theme settings. Okay, so our property has been successfully created, right? So here's the property and we can actually find this in the actual search. So I would go over here to home and I just click on search. You'll see that 5067 Taylor Way displays right here. It also shows that it was discounted right here. So really cool, right? Now, if you guys do want to delist properties, I'll show you guys how to do that. So I'll go ahead and click on edit property. And let's say for example, someone bought the house or you wanna take it down. All you gotta do is over here under visibility, You'll just go ahead and change this to privates. Also, you guys can delist this altogether. So right here, this says move to draft. 
if you click on switch to draft, this will leave it like in a pending state, but it will take it off the website. So now it's no longer available on the website, but you guys can always publish it later if you guys decide to you know, repost it or if there was a problem with the agent or something, you guys can always go ahead and just add it back to the website. So you'll see there it's draft and these are active right there, right? So if I go to the website and I try to search for it, it will no longer be available, right? So Taylor Way is now gone. Now also all of your properties will be displayed in your listing section. So over here under real estate, if I click on properties, you'll see that all the properties are displayed right here. So you guys can go ahead and you know check these out and edit them or anything that you guys want to do, you guys can adjust the properties from right here. Now, lastly, you'll see over here under luxury family home, how on the right side on actions, how you guys have options. So you can remove this from the featured, you can expire this, you can duplicate it, you can put it on hold, or you can mark it as sold, right? So that is pretty much it for the listings. If you guys do have any questions about listings or listing types or properties, let me know in the comments below. I can always help you guys out. Okay, so in this part of the video, we're gonna be explaining the house's options. There's not too much in the house's option that's important except the field builder. So that's something where if you want to add something else to your listings like septic tank, right? Or if you wanna add something like a credit score section, you guys can use the field builder. So I'll be showing you how to use the house's options in this section of the video. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back to the tutorial. So over here, I'm gonna click on houses. All right, so now let's talk about the houses option. So if you click on houses here on the left, you'll see that there's a few options here. Now the first is just the basic plugins. So when you guys were installing the theme, it recommended a few plugins. And these are the plugins and you guys can install and activate them here at any time. Next is the fields builder. Now this is probably the most useful thing about the options here, but I'm gonna come back to this at the end. Let's just first keep going here and go through each tab and we'll come back to that. Next, we have the custom post types, such as like agents, agencies. You guys can turn these on or on. You know, I don't really know why they're even here, but uh, if you want to add those in, you guys can go ahead and add those in right here. All right, next we have taximonies. Taximonies are the taximonies that we selected earlier, such as country, city, area, and county and state. You guys can choose to enable or disable these. And country might probably be the only one that's actually reasonable, right? Because if you're selling real estate, you're probably only selling it in one country, right? So you could disable the country uh, taximony if you choose to go that route, right? But this is where you guys can turn these on and off. All right, the next one is permalinks. Permalinks is essentially setting up the permalinks for your website. I don't find any reason to adjust any of these. In fact, I would leave all these standard. If you guys do adjust this, it could create four fours on your website. So I would just leave this standard here under the permalink section. Next is the currency switcher, right? And this is where you guys can get exchange rates from openexchangerates.org if you guys do want to add in specific currencies and switch them on your website. Um, you'll go to this website and you know sign up, make an account, enter your API key, and they'll give you the exact rates for whatever currency you choose to use, okay? And then here we have currencies, and this is where you guys can add a new currency. So I'll click on add new, and then this is where you guys can add in your specific currency, right? So for example, I'll put in Thai bot, and then this is the bot, all right? I don't even have the symbol on my keyboard, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure where to get that. I could probably get it from the internet somewhere, but uh, yeah, so you'll enter your currency symbol here, right? And then you'll choose the currency position. Here you can choose the decimal points and then you can create this specific uh, currency. Now I think a lot of the other currencies just use periods. I think Eastern Europe, they use a lot of periods in their currencies, but uh, America uses commas, we don't use periods. So you guys can add a currency here if you guys choose to go that route. And then if you click on currency, it'll list right here. And then you can assign those currencies later when you guys create a membership. Here is documentation. If you guys have any problems, feel free to message these guys. You know, guys, I do my best for the comments, but if this is something regarding something like very technical with coding and you want to do something very dynamic, I'm probably the wrong guy to talk to, right? You probably should talk to these guys or maybe hit up someone on Fiverr that can help you with the houses theme. Here we have feedback. If there's something that you want to adjust, you guys can send them feedback right here, right? And then here is the purchase code where you can enter in your purchase code at any time. So now let's go over here to the fields builder. So the fields builder essentially displays on the properties when people are creating them. Over here, I'll click on add new. 
All right, so here we have a field name, and I'm going to type in septic tank, or septic tank. Here I put yes or no. Okay, you guys can see I've already done this. And then for type, we have a few different options. We can choose a text, a number, URL, multi-select, or whatever, right? I'll just select text for now, just to make this uh, you know simple. And then here, I'll submit it. So under Fields Builder, you'll now see we have septic tank. So I'm gonna go over here to this property, and now you're gonna see that under this specific property, the one that we created earlier, we now have the option for septic tank, right? So this helps agents put in more information about the property. And also, you know, if there's something that you want to add here, you can add it in right here. And we can add in another one, right? So for example, and then maybe this will be like type of roof, right? Type of roof. And then for type, we have the multi-select, right? And here I'll put in shingles, right? We also have wood shingles, which are actually banned in California and some other states because I guess they cause fires. And then we have cap roof. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and click on submit. All right. So now we have two different fields, right? We have septic tank and also the type of roof because, you know, some houses we need to know what the type of roof is just in case, right? And I'll go ahead and refresh this page now. Once I refresh the page and I scroll down, you'll see that type of roof now has this little box. If I click on this box, it now has this option where I can select shingles, wood shingles, or cap roof, okay? So that is what the fields builder is. It essentially adds more fields here for your properties, just in case you wanna add in more information about your specific property. All right, so I went ahead and I put in yes for septic tank, and then for type of roof, I put cap roof and then I'll click on update. Now there's one thing I do wanna mention. If you guys put nothing there at all, then the field will not show up, okay? So if you don't want it to display, just leave it blank and it will not display in the settings. So let's go ahead now and scroll down here and we're gonna find that under the details, I'll go ahead and find out here, here we go. So type of roof, cap roof, septic tank, yes. So that's how you guys can add a little bit more information about your properties. So that is pretty much it for the house's options. They are, you know, there are some useful options here. I think the only thing that's really helpful is the fields builder, but overall, they're just very miscellaneous options that you probably will never use. So now that you guys know how to use the house's options and you guys know how to create listings and you guys are familiar with all these different labels, now let's go back to the search results, or I'm sorry, the search bar. So I did mention about the search bar, but now that we have a lot more labels and stuff like that, now we can use this and understand what we're doing with it. Now remember, the search is not required, right? But every page does usually have some sort of search or on some pages I might have it. So this is where you can start using the labels to actually apply for your search, right? So here we have this first field, which is cities. Now you can change this to pretty much anything, right? For example, you can search by beds, you can search by bathrooms, you can search by price, right? For example, here I'll put the minimum price, right? And then for the label, I'll put min price, right? And if we click on this now, you're gonna see that only prices show up, right? So yeah, so that's how we can basically, you know, adjust that. And then for the placeholder, we'll just put like price, like where people can shop by price pretty much, right? So here we have price. And then we can go ahead and add in one more, right? So we have price, but we can also do something else like uh, max price, right? We can do max price. So we have min price, and then here I'll put max, right? So max price. Maybe this one over here, I'll put min price, right? Just to, just to make sure that it's, it, it correlates together, right? So we have min price and then max price, right? And then we can add another one. I'll duplicate this one. And then right here, we can put something like the... Uh, the city or the area. Remember how we created those earlier? So here we have city, put city, and then also over here I'll put city. Okay, now we got city, and then you'll see this is a list of all the available cities that we created. And let's make another one, right? So we have city, and uh, you know, I think at this point you guys understand, right? We can do by a year built by radius by septic tank. Remember how we created septic tanks? We can, you know, go that route or whatever. Uh, features, right? We can search by features. So you'll see here that it displays a list of all of our features, right? So it's very dynamic, as you can tell, right? There's many different ways on how you guys can approach this. 
And then over here we have the keyword, but we should probably change this to type, right? I think type's a little bit better, right? Type is basically saying like, what is the type of things you're looking for, right? Something like this, which is a little bit more focused, right? So I'll put type and then over here, I'll also put type. Keyword is too broad, I think, right? It's just, you know, it's, it's cool, but it's just too broad. And then the search button right here, I'm sorry, the type over here, you see under column width, how this is taking up all the space. We can reduce this to like 25, right? Something a little bit more smaller, right? Or, or 20, right? Make them all the same size, right? And then you'll see the search bar just like snaps right into place. Now we can make the search bar larger by clicking on the column right here. And under layouts, I think we can make this larger. I'm sorry, the six dots right here and we can make this larger, right? So you'll see that we can make this a little bit larger and we can add in more and stuff like that. Now, one thing also I do wanna mention, so this is the form field, right? So this is what we just designed right here, but there's also tabs and tabs is basically like the things above it, right? So here we put for sale, for rent, but I think we added in another one, right? We have pre-auction, right? And we also have like foreclosures, so you can add those in, or we can change that to city or type and whatever. So you can mix and match this, right? You can have tabs up here, and then you can mix and match it with the search bar. So it's very dynamic, as you can tell. I think the theme developer did a very good job at setting this up. I think for rent and for sale are probably ideal, and these two as well, right? So that's how you guys would adjust the search bar. But let's just go ahead and save this and let's see what we can do here with this. All right, so here we go. I'll go ahead and select for sale, right? Looking for houses for sale. Minimum price, I'll just put any. The maximum price, uh, I'll, I'll leave it as any for now as well, right? And then here we have the cities. So I'll just select Las Vegas and then I'll click on search. And there you go. So we only have one property, right, in Las Vegas. So I'll click on this. And you'll see that this is in Las Vegas, right? So here we go, Las Vegas, Nevada. And here is the property. Now uh, we can go ahead and try this again, right? Let's just do California this time, right, for sale. And uh, let's just do Los Angeles. And then just click on search. Here we go, we got seven properties and you'll see Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, and they are all in Los Angeles, right? Do we have any in New York? I'm not really sure if we assigned it yet. So let's go ahead and check it out really quick. New York, and then click on search. Yeah, we do it. We have five in New York. Cool, awesome. So that is how you guys can adjust the search bar filter. So it is very dynamic. Um, they have a lot of demos where they've done a, a lot of really cool things. But um, on your own free time, you guys can go through this. You guys can mix and match stuff. And now that you guys know how to use custom post types, you can use those to apply to your search filter bar. So here's some other examples of their search filter. So here they have the type, right? Location, property size. Well, yeah, I guess they did bedrooms. And then they have your budget, right? So this is like the, basically the max spending, right? And then they have for rent and for sale. They also have this one right here, which is a lot more dynamic, right? So you can search by cities, by status, by, what is this? It's, I guess type, I'm not really sure. Bedrooms, minimum area, maximum area, min price, and also max price. So it is very dynamic, the ones that they created over here. So they basically chose to use like square footage as part of their search filter. So you'll see it pops up there. So you guys can always go that route, but um, take a look at their demos, you know, see which one you like. If you guys don't want one, you guys don't have to have one, but um, take a look at their demos, get some ideas, and then just go from there. Okay, so in this part of the video, we're gonna be talking about the house's theme options. Now, theme options for every theme is like the bread and butter, right? It's basically what can this theme do, and that's what the theme options are for. So in this part of the video, I'll be explaining all the theme options. We're gonna go through most of the important ones and explain how they work. There are some that I'm gonna skip just because they're like irrelevant and depreciated. In fact, some are depreciated, and I'll talk about those in the video as well. So the theme options in a nutshell control various parts of the website that the page builder normally does not. There are a lot of features to cover. So in this part of the video, I'll go through all the features and explain how all they work. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back to the video. All right, party people. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys the theme options for the houses theme. Now, throughout your website, you can adjust various parts of the website, like the search results pages. You can change the headers, the footers, and other various parts of the website, like the blog. You can do all this from the theme options for the houses theme. 
So we're gonna go through all the theme options. I'll explain the more important ones, and then I'll also show you where those changes are made. So if you click on theme options here at the top left, you'll be brought to the houses theme options. Now really quick, so these options here on the left side are the same exact options here under this tab right here. I'm not really sure why the developer decided to duplicate these options, but these are the same options. So try not to get overwhelmed, right? Because I'm sure when you first look at this, it looks like tons of options, but they are the same options. So we have general translation logos, general translations, logos, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the first is the general tab. And this controls some general parts of your website, like the container width, where you can change the container width. Although most websites are full width, you can also have a back to top button where, you know, here at the bottom right, you'll see there's a back to top. And then we have the add to favorites and then breadcrumbs. So add to favorites is basically a little add to favorites thing right here, right? And this is if they are logged out, right? So login required for add to favorites, right? And then we also have some options like mobile phone number and breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are when you actually click on a property right here. I'll just give you guys an example. Here are the actual breadcrumbs. So if you wanna get rid of this right here, you can turn that off. If you want to you know, have them on, you can leave them on, right? And they have some other general options here like pop-up gallery caption. And that's just like a little caption at the bottom when people click on the images and so on and so forth, right? But these ones right here are a little bit more important where you have the square foot text and then you have the square meters text. So if you wanna change that, you can do it right here. Also here, you'll see that there is the sticky sidebar. A sticky sidebar is when actually users click on specific properties and then on the right side, you'll see that like the, the right side, how this is sticky. You can turn these on or off on various parts of the website. So here you'll see the property detail page. We have it on, right? So if you don't like the sticky sidebar, you guys can always take that off. But um, yeah, it's just an option where you guys can turn those on or off at your discretion. Okay, so those are the general options. Pretty simple, right? Pretty basic. Next, we have the translation. Now, this essentially allows you to translate various parts of the website, and you can change this to anything, right, to fit your company culture. So add compare, you could put add to compare, or add compare, or just compare, right, something like this. And then this will actually apply throughout the text on your website. Next is logos and favicon. Now, if you guys don't have a logo, there is a website that I recommend to go to, and I do have a coupon code, I think, and it is fiverr.com. So you guys can use my affiliate link if you guys want, and it'll bring you to this page right here. You guys don't have to log in, just, just click around, you know, click, click away and you can close all those tabs. And here you guys can get like a logo for your real estate website for like, you know, 10 bucks, right? So over here in your budget, I'll put under 30 bucks. So here's a list of the logos where you guys can have someone to create a logo for you for just like five, 10, 20, 30 bucks. I believe I do have a coupon code and I will leave that coupon code in the description below of this video. I think it'll give you like 20% off your first purchase with Fiverr, but I would definitely use these guys here to create a really nice logo because it's much better than using those free logo website maker tools. In fact, legally, you can't even use those tools because uh, you can't copyright them. So you're better off getting your own logo here so you can trademark the logo so you can use it and no one else can. So you can go ahead and upload your logos here and you can also do it here for the light box and then also for the dashboard logo as well. Next, we have headers. If you guys do wanna change the header of your website, you guys can do that from right here. And they have various styles, right? So they have this one here, and I'll click on Save Changes. And if I refresh the page, you'll see the header has changed, right? And also we can you know, change it to this one, Save Changes, refresh the page. And we can actually adjust the colors here and stuff like that. But what we can do here is you guys can go ahead and go through these right here, see which one you like, and you can always change the header. Here we have the header height where you can make the header longer, right? So if you want it longer or bigger, you can also make it bigger as well. And then they have some other general options, like if you want a box or full with layouts, and then also if you want to have the navigation aligned to the left or to the right side. So I'm gonna click on this header style here at the top and then click on save changes. And then here we have social media, where you guys can add in your social media icons. This will display in the header and also on the elements and also on any other element that you guys use for the social element with Elementor. So it will appear at the top if you guys have social icons. It'll also appear um, if you guys use the Elementor elements for the actual page. And then also these right here also will actually be the social icons and they'll link to those specific areas. So that's what these options are referring to, okay? 
Create listing button. If you guys do want to have people actually create listings on your website, you can actually turn this on or turn this off, right? So if you guys turn this on, it'll actually prompt them to create properties. So I'll go ahead and click on save changes and then you will see the create a listing tab right here. So uh, that's what that option does. And this will allow users to actually create listings on your websites, right? But they will need to log in first, right? So uh, yeah, we can actually turn this option on or off in the general options. So next we have the top bar and the top bar is actually this black bar up here at the top. So you guys can turn this on and off and then you can adjust the phone number and then and the email address and then also add a slogan to your website. They also have this currency switcher, right? So they have social icons, they have contact info or the currency switcher. So maybe social icons would be a little bit more appropriate, right? Here you have the area switcher. This will actually turn on and off the area switcher. So here you'll see that you can adjust things in square feet and also in square meters. So you can turn that on or off if you guys choose. Now the splash page is basically depreciated. I don't recommend using this option at all. So you can do all this with the page builder. So just ignore splash page, it's very outdated. Next we have the login and register. So you guys can have the login and register on your websites. And if you guys do turn this on, you guys need to actually be your website logged out in order to see the changes. So I'll go ahead and visit the website here again. And here you'll see that if I click on this, it'll prompt us to log in and register. You guys can also change this to text as well, I think on the next options, but uh, that's what that options is basically referring to. So here you'll see for the login register, you guys can you know choose icon or text. And then you guys can go ahead and turn things on like the first name, last name, phone number, right? Maybe first name, last name is appropriate. And then you guys can redirect to other pages. So you can redirect them after login to like a different page right here. Maybe here you can even link them to like the create a listing page or you can link them to the dashboard page, right? If you guys are not sure, just use current page and then they can always just log into the account when they're on the home page. Here you guys can display your terms and conditions page, right? And then you can also turn on the via Facebook login and then also Google. If you guys do turn this on, you guys will need to have the credentials. And again, I recommend going to Fiverr here in order to have the developer set up the API for you. So all you gotta do is go to Fiverr and type in social login. And I do know how to do this, but unfortunately they keep changing the interface quite often. So you guys can pay these guys like 10 bucks and they will literally set up the API for you guys. So they will need your Facebook API and also your Google API. And then they will go ahead and paste all that info here and then people can log in with Facebook and Google on your websites. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so that is that. So next we have user rules. And if you guys do decide to have registration, you guys will need to actually turn this on. This will essentially allow people to register on your websites. And if they do register, what roles do you want to have them, you know, available, right? So we can have buyer, right? You can have seller and then you can have agency or agent or whatever, right? And then once they actually create an account, you can actually adjust the roles and then give them specific roles, right? And then here you can change the name of the actual roles if you wanna you know, change them and stuff like that. So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. And then also I'll explain to you where those are located. So if you scroll down to the bottom over here under users, and then at the top, I'll click on add a new user. And let's say like someone wants to sell on your website. So this would be like John, right? John at able.com, right? And then you can make an account for John. And then here you can assign the role for John, right? So is he a uh, agent? Is he a seller? Is he a buyer? You know, something like that. You can go ahead and assign those roles to John. And then they can also log into your account, or I'm sorry, log into the website, and then they can create a listing if we enable that in the theme options. Next, we have the price and currency. You guys can choose to enter in different currencies. Remember earlier how we set up the Thai bot? You guys can actually add your currency right here. And you can also add in currencies here. And then there's some other information about, you know, short price and then also the Indian currency format if you guys are using Indian currency. But you guys can create any currency that you guys want and then you guys can uh, list them right here. Next is topography. This actually does help with like the footer and also like the top bar and then the headings. So for example, if you wanna change like the actual top bar font, you can do that right here, right? By picking a specific font, okay? Also, you can do the same thing for the footer. You can adjust the font and then also for the heading text as well. And if we scroll up, we also have navigations. Now I believe navigations is actually the main menu right here. So it's this one right here. So let's just go ahead and test this out really quick. We'll change this to Dorsa, right? I'll refresh the page and there you go, right? So if you do wanna change the font for the actual menu, you'll need to use this option right here. 
And then here is the body as well. So uh, for the body, right, I'll click on search. And the body is referring to this text right here, right? So it's everywhere you basically have listings or on your property ad page, it'll affect all those. So over here, I'll just select some random one and I'll save it. And then I'll just refresh the page. And then you'll see the font has changed. Next is the styling. So here we have the styling where you guys can adjust the color. So notice over here how we have this green color scheme. And I also have this blue menu right here that we need to adjust, right? You guys can do all this right here. So the first one is the body, right? And this is essentially the body of the actual website. So you'll see right here, right here. But what we can do is just basically change this color, right? To something like blue, save changes. And the best way to learn how to change the color scheme is simply just tinker with the options. And then the same thing for the navigation bar. And we can go ahead and select the color here, right? Background color. Now let's refresh the page. All right, cool. We got that green we've been using throughout the website, right? So it goes back to that green. And then here you can adjust like the tabs color, the text color on hover and so on and so forth, right? All right, so on your own free time, you guys will need to go to these options here and you guys will have to go ahead and adjust the color, right? So this is pretty self-explanatory, right? So the advanced search, on your dashboard menu, we have property details, right? You guys can change like the color for the property details for the borders and the modules, right? And also for the featured label, which was this over here, if I click on the search. So here's the featured label as well. So you guys can adjust the color there to like something like blue, right? If you wanna change that, then I'll refresh the page and then you'll see it's blue, right? So uh, yeah, I think you guys get it by now. So this is where you guys can adjust all the styling options for your website. So you guys will need to go through each one and adjust it to your specific liking, right? Now, if you guys do wanna change like the actual layout for your website, here, I'll go ahead and uh, click on one of these properties. So we can actually adjust this in the back end of the property, but we can also set a global option. So that means every single property will have this specific style right here. So if I click on this one here and I refresh the page, you'll now see that the Brittany Watkins little, you know, pop-up notice pops up and users can actually submit their listing right here. If I select another one, like, uh, I think this one's nice, right? Our colors are kind of wacky now, right? We got the green and the blue and the orange, ugh, <laughs> right? So make sure you guys adjust those colors on your website. Here we go. We have this new uh, landing page, right? Okay, so I'm gonna select this one here, right? Now this, tab is actually pretty crucial. So earlier I showed you guys how you guys can change the layout for your actual content. So for example, we have tabs, right? So for the header, it's gonna use this specific style and then it's also going to use tabs now, you see that? So this option right here is only referring to the content layout. So we have tabs vertical, right? And you know, I don't know what these all look like. So you just gotta go through each one and just, you know, here we got tabs like this, right? You can go that route, which is pretty, Pretty cool, right? And it looks looking good. Now this option right here, I have no idea what it does. I looked everywhere through the documentation and I couldn't find where exactly this adjusts. So we're just gonna skip this one. Sorry, I looked everywhere. Their documentation sucks. Blame the developer, <laughs> all right? Here's some other styling options for like the property content layout if you want it full width. You guys can also adjust like the detail section columns to two columns or to three columns or to one columns. And these are just other general styling options for the actual property page, right? So you guys can go ahead and check these out, right? Uh, mess around with them and fiddle with them and see which one works best for you. Here we have the default layout manager. Now really quick, in order for this one to work, I have to take this out of the tabs, okay? So I need to change this to default, all right? So just to be clear, when you guys do do this, um, it needs to be uh, under general. So the tabs will actually not work for this specific setting, right? So here we have uh, defaults, right? And now you'll see that we have certain ones enabled. So we have description, address, detail, right? We have description, address, details. If you guys want to rearrange this section, you guys can go ahead and do that right here. For example, if you want the features at the top, and then click on save changes. Now where the description used to be, features will now be displayed. You see that? So this rearranges the actual areas where the property displays content on this actual page. And these right here are disabled, okay? So if you guys do want to actually enable these elements, you'll just drag them over here. 
So now we have overview, features, and description. So now let me go over here and refresh the page. We have overview, features, and then description. If you want to delete elements that you don't find necessary, like the calculator one, we can take out the calculator by putting it in the disabled column, and then they no longer work. So if I go over here and I scroll down, you're gonna see that the Morgus calculator is here, but if I refresh the page, it's going to disappear, right? Because this section will disable it, and then this section enables it, and then you can rearrange it. Now, if you guys do decide to change the layout manager to tabs, this is where you guys can rearrange the layout manager for the tabs. So for example, we'll go back to property detail, right? And if you do select tabs, like tabs vertical, then this option will start to apply. Okay, so tabs, features at the top, and then description at the bottom, and then click on save changes. You will then see that these will start to rearrange. Okay, so I'll refresh the page. And now features is at the top, right? And then description here is at the bottom. So these are conditions if you guys select specific uh, styles. And the same thing for the luxury homes. Then this specific style will be displayed for your actual property manager page. Here we have show hide data. You guys can choose to hide specific things like print property or status or labels, or you can even get rid of favorite property. So you guys can turn these on or off for the actual properties. AdSense Spaces. If you guys wanna turn your website into a spammy website and put ads, this is where you're going to put the advertisements or you're gonna put the HTML code and then it'll propagate ads on your website. So next we have the schedule a tour and this is where you can actually uh, add time slots for the schedule tour on your property page. Now just remember, if you guys do want this, you actually need to go to the layout manager and turn this on, okay? So this, the schedule tour, you'll see, I can go ahead and drag and drop it right here, right? And then save it. But um, going back over here to the schedule a tour, you guys can go ahead and enter any times you want right here. And then also, if they select it, you can redirect them to another page. This can be a thank you page. This can be any page that you would want. So let's go ahead and take a look at our page right here. I readjusted the page, hope you guys don't mind. So if we scroll down, you'll see that schedule a tour appears right here. They can do video chat or in person. You can pick a date and then also the times based off the times that you've entered here. So next we have add a new property. And this is the section for the create a listing section. Now the first one is one step or multi-step. I definitely like one step better. So when people create a listing, it all shows on one specific page, right? All the options, you know? So they'll put everything in and they'll click on submit property and that allows them to submit the property. If you guys do select multi-step, so for example, this is multi-step where they have to enter in their property or their description, they enter the price and then they'll have to click on next and then they're brought to like the media. They'll have to upload the media and they'll click on next again and go to the next section. The next one is submitted listing approval. This will essentially make it so you have to actually approve the properties. So here you'll see there's a property listed as draft. You'll have to go in and approve properties before they're listed on your website. You always wanna approve what people are putting on your website. Same thing for edited listings and also reactivated listings. You always want to make sure someone approves this. So I'd put all those to yes. Here is multi-agents mode. If you guys do wanna assign a property to multiple agents, you can turn that on. And then when you click on a property, you can assign a property to multiple agents. So for example, I have this property here, and if I scroll down to contact information, I can now add multiple agents. So I can add Daryl Wilson, Brittany Watkins, and all these other people to one specific property. So the next is multi-section. Essentially what this allows users to do is, if you guys turn this on, they can go ahead and actually select multiple listings. So they can select commercial, uh, apartments, and small business. And this applies to type. And then the next one is status and label. So if you guys do want the users, they have the ability to select everything, you can do that. But if you want them to say, you know what, you only can select you know one thing for your property, right? To make it a little bit more accurate, you can also go that route. And then below that, you have some general options. Like you can change your website to square meters or square feet. You can turn auto propagate ID and then some other settings right here. So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. So next we have the layout manager for when users add properties on your website. For example, here I'll click on create a listing. Now let's just assume that I'm just a random person coming to the website for the very first time. We have description, right? And then we also have price, okay? Over here, you'll see we have description and price. And then we have property media, right? So the next one is gonna be property media. 
right, media. So you guys can actually rearrange this for users who post on your websites. You can also include attachments for your users. So if you want them to have the ability to upload documents on your websites, you can do this for people who are trying to submit properties on your websites. You guys can also show and hide specific fields. If you don't want like septic tank showing or you don't want these other options showing, you guys can hide these forms when users are submitting properties on your websites. Here you have the required forms. If you guys do wanna make something required where they must fill out, you guys can actually check these right here. So for example, bedrooms should be you know required, so should bathrooms, and so should the state, right, and the city, right? And uh, yeah, I think those are, uh, oh yeah, and the title, of course. I'll make these required for users who want to post on my websites. So now I'll click on save changes. All right, so now let's go ahead and click on searches. So the next option is the header search, and this will actually display a navigation bar on your specific search page. So over here, you'll see that we have the search results page, and you'll see that we have this header here at the top. You guys can turn this off, or you guys can change it right here, right? And this only displays on the actual search page. Now, this is referring to if someone actually clicks on advanced, you can actually choose what you want to display. So they have the keyword city areas, and then here they have the uh, like keyword, city areas and then status type bedrooms and then status type bedrooms okay so that is only if they actually select the uh, advanced options then you can use the search builder okay makes sense i would recommend to probably turn this off right i think it's more distracting right because you want people to focus on the actual properties right not the actual search bar here so personally i would disable it I mean, if I were you guys, I would disable it, right? Because if it bothers me, it might bother other people too, right? Now, the next is the doc search. And this will allow you guys to add in header maps and property sliders above your actual page. That looks something like this right here. So if you guys do turn this option on, you guys can you know, select these other various options where you guys can select. And then if you go over here to the page settings and you go to header type, this is where you guys can adjust it. So for example, here on my website, I actually have the property slider and if i change that to something like property maps and then click on updates and then you'll see that there's a map here now instead right now you probably shouldn't put this on your home page right you could probably put this like on another page right so essentially it just adds a little doc search for specific pages so this would be good for something like your agents page or your property pages or something like that and here you guys can enable different options for this page. So you guys can, you know, choose it on only home page. And then you guys can actually build it just like we built the other ones. You guys can use the search builder here and then have users search for specific things like your keyword city status. You can enable those or disable those if you guys choose. So next we have the half map search. Now, just to be clear. So for the half map search to work, you first need to go over here to the search results page and you have to turn it on, right? So they did spell result wrong, right? I guess I gotta fix that. So over here, you'll first need to select half map. Once you do that, then over here under searches, then you can design it, right? So then you can customize it. So these are options to basically customize the half map if you do have it enabled. And in this case, I do. So I'll just go ahead and walk you guys through this. So I'll refresh the page over here. And then I will do a quick search, okay. And then you'll see the half map shows up, okay? And then you can choose to like turn this on or off, right? And these are all the styling options that you guys will need. If you guys do have half map search enabled, this is where you guys can take out the keywords or the cities or whatever, or you can take out the search. So if you don't want the search, uh, we can just go ahead and put that one there instead. Cause I mean, this right here is a lot of junk, right? So let's go back over here and refresh the page and let's just see what that's done. All right, so then you'll see like it gets rid of all those filters. It's a lot more cleaner, right? So yeah, you guys can go ahead and design the half map right here, okay? So the next one is the banner search, and this is another depreciated option. Essentially, if you guys choose to actually use the banner search elements, you can just basically create a search banner, but they've already created one for Elementor. So this is only if you guys are not using Elementor. Uh, this is more of a depreciated option. So I'm just gonna skip this because we don't need to use it. And then lastly, we have the settings pages. This is essentially adding filters for your search. So for example, you can have a dropdown for city area, right? So over here, city is like a dropdown, right? And then you can also exclude statuses. So if you want to like not show some, like foreclosures 
or if you don't want to show pre-auctions in your search, you can go ahead and apply that as well, right? So these settings right here are just basically uh, search filters for your actual search bar. So you guys will need to go to these options here, see which one applies to you. Uh, here they have minimum price, maximum price, beds and bathrooms. So this is where you can assign how many bedroom lists, the room list, if you guys do have those as search filters on your search bar, okay? So yeah, that is pretty much it for the searches, right? Then we have the search result page. Now this is basically, if you guys have a search results page, what kind of search results page do you want? You can have a normal page, right? You can have a full width page, a left sidebar or a right sidebar. So for example, if we change this to a full width page and then click on search, you'll see this is now a full width page, okay? So this option right here is just setting the search results page. Property layouts, this is essentially going to change the property layouts on your actual page. So if you guys do want a grid view, right? We'll go ahead and refresh the page here. Then you'll see it's a grid view, right? So this applies, you know, so the search results page, this is the actual page, the layout, and then these are the property styles of how they display on your listing, okay? Makes sense? All right, cool. Next, we have the map settings. Now, this is where we can embed the Google Maps API, and I think they also have the OpenStreetMap API, right? Oh, no, 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 I think Mapbox, right? They need, yeah, they need an API, right? So for now, you guys can just use OpenStreetMap. It's a great way for, you know, you guys to display your map. We will integrate Google Maps API a little bit later, but um, for now, we'll just use OpenStreetMap. So if you guys have half map enabled, you guys can change the property type from list view to grid view and so on and so forth, okay? They probably should have put this in the search results page, right? Because here you can design, you know, half map, right? But instead they put it down here, which can be very confusing at times because you might not know what you're actually changing, right? Listing options. So if you guys do have a listing or a grid, this is where you guys can also adjust the options for listing options. For example, you can take out the compare button, you can take out the preview button, you can take out the add to favorite button if you guys have the listing options available, right? And then over here, we have the composer. This essentially allows you to rearrange the items on the listing pages. For example, they have bedroom, bath, garage, area, right? We have bedroom, bath, garage, area. So you can rearrange these if you want. Since this is a listing, you'll see that uh, it'll actually change right here. See that? So, but this is only because we have the listing search results available. Make sense? Okay. I know this can be a little confusing, but you have to kind of get in the developer's mindset of how he wants you to change this, right? So I'm just the middle guy here, right? But the thing is you can't customize everything, but the way you can customize it at times does seem a little bit awkward. So the next is the taxonomies layouts. And this is essentially, if people actually click on a category on your website, you guys can also change the layout for that specific page. So for example, I'll put the sidebar on the left side, right? And we'll have to click on one of these uh, taxonomies, right? So let's go ahead and find one. Uh, here, I'll go ahead and uh, click on the actual property, right? And then here we have our taxonomies. So I'll go ahead and click on enterprise. Here you're gonna see that this will show all the properties under enterprise. And this is what this page is referring to is the actual taxonomy page. So if you wanna have a full width page, and I refresh the page, you'll see now this is full width. So the taxonomies is pretty important if you guys want to adjust the style on the taxonomy pages. All right, next we have the contact forms. Now the contact forms will display on various parts of your website if you have the template sets. So here we have the property page. So for example, on the property page, you guys can turn this on or off, right? So over here, I'll disable this and I will, or I'm sorry, we have to put this one disabled because we have a sidebar, right? And over here, you'll see that we have the agent. And if I refresh the page, you guys will see the agent is now gone, right? And just remember, we are using the house's custom form. We're not using these other forms, okay? So uh, yeah, it's a small option to add, but uh, you guys can always turn that on or off. So next we have the Google reCAPTCHA. I'll go ahead and turn this on. And I'm gonna copy this link in a new tab right here, right? And this is actually a lot simpler. They've made it really easy to add reCAPTCHAs now. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my Gmail account. So once you guys log in to your Gmail account, it'll bring you to like a Google reCAPTCHA. And all you gotta do right here is just click on create. 
And we're just going to enter in the websites. So over here, Daryl Wilson tutorial, we'll go paste that in there. And here we have different recaptures, right? We have version three and then version two. So this one's with a score and this one's with a challenge. But I'll just go ahead and just leave it as version three. Here I'll add in my domain. So for domains, I'll put in www dots. Okay. And there you go. And all you gotta do is just copy this credential and then put it on your websites. So over here, we'll take the site key and paste it there. And then we'll put the secret key and then we'll paste it there. This will dramatically reduce the spam. So I do recommend that you guys do this, right? And then click save changes. And then it'll add that little Google recapture logo uh, to your website. It'll add this right here on your website, right? And this will, this will really help you guys reduce spam. It's a great thing to add. So next we have memberships and I'll come back to memberships a little bit later in this video. Here we can go ahead and enable a free membership, a per listing, or a membership, okay? But we'll come back to this a little bit later, right? This isn't for everyone, so we'll leave that towards the end. So next we have the email management, and this is actually very important if you guys do want to uh, adjust the email heading on your emails that are being sent from your websites. So here you can upload your own logo, you can change the background color, and then here you can also adjust the footer, and then below that we have the social links, and these will display at the bottom of your email. The only issue is, is that they don't have a preview email thing. So I can't really show you guys an example of this because um, they don't have an option for preview. But if you guys do have people purchasing listings on your website, you might want to adjust this because they will see this information when they get a confirmation about their listing. Next, we have the 404 page. So if someone enters something in wrong on your website, a 404 will display, right? And here you can basically edit the content. So, oh no, page not found. You guys can go ahead and over here and just update the content. Are you lost? Let's see, are you lost? And over here, if I refresh the page, you'll see it says, are you lost? And then they can just go back to the home page. But you can adjust the text here just in case you want to redirect them back to your home page. So next we have the footer, and this is actually pretty important. So we can go ahead and adjust the footer. So if you want a full width layout, He'll hit on refresh. You'll see it's a full width layout, right? And then we have, I guess this, you, you can tell what this is, right? It's like a two column, but this one's a lot larger. So uh, we can see what that does, right? And then here we can have many columns, right? Many columns, oops, refresh the page. Okay. And yeah, there's also, you guys can upload a logo right here. So I'll throw in a logo, right? And then here we can adjust the text. So we have the copyrights, the Facebook, and then all this other information you guys can adjust right here, right? So it, yeah, you guys can go ahead here and adjust the versions of your footer as well. So version two, let's take a look at that right there, right? And again, you know, the only way to really learn all this guys is just to really change the versions and just mess with the options. But if you guys actually wanna change the elements there, you'll need to go to the widget section. So let's go ahead and go to the widgets. We'll find the widgets over here under appearance, and then we'll click on widgets. Okay, so we'll go ahead and scroll down here. And now we have footer area one, right? Footer area one, you guys can see that this section right here is controlling footer area one. Here we have footer area two, which is discover, and it's this section here, right? So here I'll put something like Daryl Wilson Real Estate Real Estate is a scam company that is uh, bad, okay? And then for the title, we'll put like about us, right? All right, and then for the footer area two, so this is the house's property taximonies, but you guys can add in your own, right? So if you guys wanna add in something else here, we can add in different elements here, right? We can add in more houses elements, right? Maybe featured properties, and there we go. So that's what it'll look like for the footer area two. And then we can go over here to footer area three. We'll just skip that one and we'll put something for footer area four. And then tell you what, we'll put in some properties instead. So we're gonna throw in some houses properties. So we'll just do uh, featured properties, right? And we'll show five and we'll show them as a list. And then I'll click on update and I'll take a look at our website.
Okay, so you'll see here how we are actually missing the featured properties, but that's a quick fix. But you'll see right here, we have the about us, the discover, and then we have the widget underneath that because this is column two, and then we have lifestyle. This didn't propagate because we probably need to add four columns under the settings, right? So let's go back over here to the theme options, and we're gonna scroll down to the, we'll scroll down to the footer. And here you'll see, we need to actually select four columns, right? So we only have three. So footer area four will display nothing. So now that I've set four, if I go over here and I refresh the page, you'll see that the properties now display, right? And I actually chose to display five, and I think that's maybe too big. I probably should have put something like the slider, you know, cause this is like, a, this is kind of large here, right? It's kind of a large footer. So under the footer area four, I'll change this to a slider instead. And I think that'll actually reduce all that space. So now I'll refresh the page. And there you go. Now we have a slider where you just can go ahead and slide here on the bottom of the website. So that is pretty much the footer summed up. You guys can go ahead and adjust it. You guys can change the style and add in any elements you guys want for the footer of your website. And the last one that's actually pretty important is the optimization. So you guys can actually turn some of these on and this will actually make your website a little bit faster where you guys can minify the JavaScript. I'll turn this one on, the CSS as well. So I do think lazy load is probably the most important one here. Essentially what lazy load does is lazy load will only load the images on the actual server if the user scrolls down. So some websites, if you go to the website, it starts to load everything right away, which can result in a lot of server strain, right? But lazy load will actually only load images uh, if a user scrolls down. So I'm gonna scroll down really fast here and you're gonna see that some of the images will fade in, right? You see how they fade in like that? How it's fading in, see that? So because of that, that's what lazy load is, and it just basically reduces strain on the server. So I do recommend to set these options for the optimization section in the theme customizer. And guys, that is pretty much it for the general options with the theme customizer. On your own free time, feel free to go through some of these, adjust them to your liking. But overall, we went through all of the theme options right here. There were some like custom code and import that I didn't go over, but I don't really wanna get into that because most of you guys are not custom coders or developers. All right, party people. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to integrate the Google Maps API and also the Mapbox API as well. So. Elementor does have elements where you guys can embed Google Maps, but you'll see that if we add it in here, it just says, oops, something's wrong because we don't have the API on the actual website. You guys can also add this on the search bar right here for the geolocate option, and you can also add it on your property ad page if you want to display Google Maps. So I'll show you guys how to integrate both Google Maps and also Mapbox as well. So let's go over here to our dashboard. Next, we're gonna click on theme options. Okay, and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find the option for map settings. So click on map settings. So there's three different options, right? You have OpenStreetMap, Mapbox, and Google. OpenStreetMap is also a great free alternative. It displays the maps, it shows locations on the map, and it's really good, it's really accurate. The next one is Mapbox. Mapbox is actually a free service, but once you go over a certain threshold, they will then start to charge you guys. So all you need to do right here is just click on the link to go to mapbox.com. And all you have to do is just make a free account. That's it, just make an account and it'll bring you to this page right here. Once you go to this page, all you gotta do is just copy and paste this and just paste it in the map API key and you're done. Like it's super easy. And this is free, so it doesn't cost anything whatsoever. But again, once you go over a certain threshold, it will then charge you. So that's just something to be uh, aware about. If you go over here to the pricing, you know, they're very generous too. You'll see like, if it's more than like, uh, let's see right here, if it's more than like 100,000 like visitors or something, it'll then charge you like, you know, per month. But I think most of us will probably be under that, right? Unless you guys are like huge, huge companies, right? Then you'll have to pay. But uh, yeah, so that's how you guys can integrate the map box. Really simple, right? And then there's these options right here where you can put like marker or price pins. And then there's some other general options for the map box. The next one is Google Maps API. Now Google Maps API does charge you guys, just to be very clear. So you guys will need to have a credit card and you guys will need to actually have a Gmail account already. Now all you'll need to do is go ahead and click on this link right here, or it says here. I have tons of Google Map API keys. I have like probably like 50 of them. 
So it'll bring you to this page right here. And what we're gonna do is right here, I'll click on get started. Now, in order to get to this page, you must have a credit card linked to your Gmail accounts and it'll tell you to actually create a project here on the left side. So I've already created a project. You'll see there are various projects I have. So you'll just go ahead and create a project. And once you do create a project, it'll bring you right back here. On the left side, you're gonna see maps and API services. So click on APIs and services. And here we have maps, I'll click on maps. And this is the one that you guys need right here. It's called maps JavaScript API. You'll see I already have it enabled, right? But uh, what I'll do over here is I'll just go ahead and disable it and then just re-enable it. Okay, once that's done, we're then gonna go over here to keys and credentials. And then we're gonna create a credential. So right here, create credentials, and then I'll create an API key. All right, cool. So we have our API, I'll copy this, and then I'll close it. Let's go over here and go back to our website. And then we're just gonna paste that in there. All right, we'll paste it in there. Click on save changes. All right, cool. So that's it. We've integrated Google Maps. You guys can also adjust this from roadmap to satellite to different options using the theme options, which is pretty cool. Now, in order to see if this is working or not, all you got to do is go to your website and then apply the Elementor Google Maps option. So I'm going to scroll down right here and look at that. We now have our map and it is propagating. Really, really cool. All right. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. And you're gonna see that we have the Google Maps, so the Google Maps element. In order to access this, just type in Google Maps, right? Google Maps. And you wanna make sure it's the houses element, so properties Google Map. And then you'll click on this, and then here you can add in different types, right? You can add in um, all of the properties, right? You can put a number of properties. You can add in the ones with the states, right? Or the cities. And you can add in the ones with the labels. And then those properties will then propagate right here on this specific map. The only drawback is that you guys will have to actually, um, you know, close it and open it because it doesn't display in the back end, right? And then here is map type. We can change the map type and then there's other options right here. All right, pretty cool. All right, and if we scroll down, we now have the Google map right here. So you'll go to the filter options and then apply whatever you guys want for your Google maps, but it is working right now. The next one is the geolocate option. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn on the builder and then we're gonna activate the geolocate option. So here is the actual search filter and here you'll see I've already entered in location. So under the field, we can now enter in geolocate and they will actually go ahead and geolocate wherever we are and it'll tell us right here in the search bar, right? It'll tell us like where we are and stuff like that. So you guys can add this as well. So now that you do have this activated, you can add in geolocate. I believe radius as well. I'm actually not sure about radius. Oh, no, no, radius is for the actual uh, distance. So no, just geolocates, right? And then over here under location, I'll type in Las Vegas, right? And then you'll see how it says powered by Google, right? And now we can pick specific cities and have Google propagate everything for your visitors, which is very convenient, right? Here I'll put Florida. You'll see how it says powered by Google and you know we can go ahead and click on it and so on and so forth, right? Pretty cool. Now the last one was the map on the actual property ad page. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and also scroll down here. So now you'll see that the Google Maps is not working right here. So we've integrated it and it's now using Google Maps on our websites. Pretty cool. So that's how you guys can integrate the Google Maps and also those other APIs. If you guys do have any questions for me or if you guys need help, feel free also to go to fiverr.com. Fiverr.com, they can go ahead and integrate the API for you just in case you guys had any problems. With that said, let's move on to the next section. Okay, so in this part of the video, we're gonna be covering the CRM and also a little bit about monetization. The CRM allows your agents to log into your website where they can create listings, they can answer messages, and they can also view their invoices. The monetization option allows users to uh, pay you to post specific properties on your website. There's various ways on how you can approach it, so I'll cover some of those in the video. With that said, let's jump back to the video. All right, party people, in this part of the video, we're gonna go over the CRM and we're also gonna talk about employee login and also letting other users log in on your websites. We'll then also be talking about packages and also price integration. So we're gonna cover everything about users logging into your website and so on and so forth, all right? Now, before we even go there, we need to actually uh, turn on or turn off some options. Now, depending on what you guys want for your websites, if you want users only like your staff to log into your websites, you need to make sure that under the general settings, you guys have this right here turned off, okay? 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create manual accounts for our employees and we need to make sure that this is off. So if this is on, that means anyone can register. So you need to make sure this is off, right? Now over here, you're gonna see users. Let's click on all users. So let's say you have an employee, right? You need to make an account for your employee. So we're gonna make an account for Paddywhack, right? So here we go, we got Paddywhack. Paddywhack's email is paddywhack at awol.com. And then we're gonna put our information, right? Paddy Wilson. And then we're gonna send the new user an email about their accounts. And for the role, we're gonna put agent because she's now an agent for the actual company, right? So then I'll click on add new user. Okay. So there we go, we got Paddywhack here. And we can make another one, right? So we can also add in another person right here. So we'll add in John. So with this credentials right here, these users can actually log in on the website. So for example, I'm gonna put John here, right? And we can actually log in as a new user as John. Okay, so I'll click on add a new user. All right, so let's go ahead and log in now with John's new account. So I'll open this up in a new browser. Okay, so John is coming to the website because you told him to come here. And we're gonna click on this little login, right? So they can choose to register, but you see here how it's disabled because we disabled registration. So people can only log in. So we're gonna log in with John, right? And then click on login. Okay, now we can choose to redirect people to the actual dashboard. Remember earlier that's in the theme options, but they can always just click over here and then just access their dashboard. So now John has full access to the CRM. So John can go ahead and look at the activities. He can look at the you know insights. He can look at all this information. He can even create his own listing right here. So John now has the ability to create his own listings, right? Now, if you guys do want John to have full access to the website like us, we can give him an admin role. So over here, if I go to role and we do the admin, which is the administrator, this user will now have access to the page builder, to the house's theme options, and so on and so forth. So these are just basically like options where you can assign them specific roles, but uh, administrator gives them the option to actually design the website. So this is something that you might wanna give to someone you trust, like a web designer or to like your closest staff. Now, before we go on any further, I do wanna just let you guys know that the login and register option is here under the theme options, and this will actually display on the header. So you guys can choose this display on the header right here. You see that? However, there is actually a module that you guys can use and you guys can create a whole nother page if you guys wanna go that route. I'll go ahead and put login and register, right? And I'll go ahead and click on publish and publish, and then I'll turn on the Elementor page builder. So right here, what I can do is I can just actually use the elements. So Houses does have his own login and register. So I think login, right? So login module, right? And I'll just show this as text. So it's a really small one, right? Login and register. I think there's another one here. So I see the elementary one actually. This one might be better. I think this one's actually better, you know? So uh, with this one right here, users can actually make an account and they can register. So you guys can always use this right here if you guys want to just have this as a private register and login page for your customers. I'm sorry, for your staff. So what I'll do over here is I'll click on view page. So then you'll see right here how it says login and register. And you guys can just give this to your employees in case you don't wanna have people access to the login on the actual website. All right, and then they can go ahead and log in right here. You'll just take this permalink and you'll just put it anywhere on the website, like on the footer or something, somewhere where it's not obvious to visitors so that your users can log into the website. So now I'll say, okay, well, let's go ahead and have anyone register. So you'll see here how this says this is disabled. We can go ahead and reactivate that. So let's go ahead and turn on registration. Okay, let's go back to dashboard. And then over here, I'll go to settings and general. So now we're gonna let anyone register on the website, right? So by clicking this, scrolling to the bottom. Now we're gonna go over here to our other tab and then we're gonna refresh the page, right? So I'll go over here and I'll refresh the page and then I'll click on register. You'll now see anyone has the option to register on your website. So they have the first name, last name, username, email, and then also the type of account right here, right? So you guys can also let users register on your website by just enabling that option. So once the user actually signs in onto your website, they can now go ahead and enter in all the information about the property. 
and the information they can enter is based off whatever we added in the back end for the admin, right? So you'll see here for like enterprise, small business, they can only select what we create for them. So you'll see here that's, uh, for example, details. You'll see here that they can enter all this info. Additional details, they can also add in additional details. The features, like we created earlier, property documents, locations, and then also here, we've integrated the Google Maps API now, so they can go ahead and enter their latitude and longitude. And if we scroll down, you'll see the plan title and all this information, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna enter in some demo content, submit the property, and then I'll show you how to approve listings once users submit them. And then you'll see now, now this is pending, right? So we now have to wait for the admin to approve it. So let's take a look at where this shows up. All right, so I'm over here under my admin account, and if I go over here to real estate and then click on properties, you're gonna now see Jenny has her property pending, and you'll see right here how this says pending approval. So all you gotta do is just go ahead and click on edit, and then you can approve it for your website. So over here, all you gotta do now is click on publish and publish, and that will approve the property. So that's how you guys can allow users and staff to submit properties on your website. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. All right, so in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how you guys can create memberships for your websites. We'll then go ahead and integrate payment gateways onto the websites where we can accept payments and credit cards on the websites. Now under theme options over here, let's click on memberships. So there's two different ways we can make money right here. We can make it free, pay for featured, per listing and also membership. If you want users to pay per listing, we can go ahead and set that here, right? And then we have options to charge like basically how much money it's gonna cost. We can set an expiration date and so on and so forth. So I'll put like, this will expire in maybe 30 days, right? The price is uh, $5. And if they wanna make it featured, it's $2, $2 right there, right? And here we have PayPal, Stripe, and checkout, but uh, we'll go ahead and just leave it as sandbox for now. Here we're gonna put in our terms and conditions page. So you guys might wanna make a terms and conditions page and then assign it, right? So by doing this, you guys can have a per listing style, right? You guys can also do membership as well. Membership is basically the same thing where you can have users post as much as they want, right? And then you can also turn on recurring payments where they can pay you like monthly or weekly and so on and so forth. You can also just do free and then have them pay for featured, which means the property will display at the top where people can see it the most. But I think most people would probably do per listing, right? Or even uh, free. I don't think people do memberships. You know, I don't think any website does that, but hey, it's your business, right? So what I'll do here is click on save changes. So now users will have to pay in order to submit property on our websites, but we first need to integrate payment gateways. So to do that, let's go ahead and scroll down right here and we're going to find the payment gateways. And here we have the PayPal payment gateway. So you guys will need to enable this and then you guys will have to enter in your client ID, your secret ID, and then also your email. Okay, so this is paypal.com and this is my PayPal account. Now you guys will need to have a business PayPal account in order for this to work. And I'll go ahead and leave the exact link of where you guys need this information. So this is the developer.paypal.com right here. And all we gotta do is you'll go ahead and first click on the link in the description. You'll log into your account and then you'll click on apps and credentials. Right here, you'll click on create an app and then just give this app a name. So this is the houses theme. And then we'll go ahead and click on merchants and click on create app. All right, cool. So that's pretty much it. We have our client ID. I'll go ahead and copy this and we'll go back over here. All right, so we'll then go ahead and paste in the client ID, right? And then also we need the secret key. So I'll go ahead and first close that. We'll go ahead and show this and then I'll also copy this as well. And then I'll paste it in here. And then you wanna make sure that you enter in your email for PayPal. So mine is Mr. Wilson at email.com and then I'll click on save changes. And that's it. So now PayPal is fully integrated on your websites. Now PayPal is a good option, but a better option is Stripe. So we're also gonna integrate stripe.com. Stripe.com is a free service. I personally use this 
uh, for my business and you'll see that we have like tons of uh, payments and we're getting you know a lot of payments from our website and stuff like that so what we're gonna do is we are going to also integrate stripe.com stripe.com is a free service it has no credit check whatsoever it is a great way to start out if you guys are getting in the e-commerce realm or selling online so we're also going to integrate stripe which are the two most popular payment gateways i think right now yeah i think they're i mean maybe uh maybe square is more popular but i don't know no one really uses that too much and all we're going to do is find our secret key and our publishable key so let's go back over here to our Stripe accounts. Over here, I'll click on Developers, API Keys, and then right here, I'll click on Create a Secret Key. All right, I'll give my secret key a name, so I'll put Houses Theme. I'll create it, and this is my new secret key, okay? I'll go ahead and paste the secret key right here, and then also I will go ahead and copy and paste the publishable key right here as well, and then click on Save. And that is it. We have now fully integrated Stripe. Okay, so now that we've integrated both of these payment gateways, there's one more step we need to do. We need to actually create the page for the Stripe and the PayPal payments. So up here, I'll click on plus new and page. So remember earlier in the video, we talked about templates. We now need to create a template for the actual payment page. So you'll see Stripe charge page. And then also we have payment page for PayPal. So let's just go ahead and make all of them, right? We're first gonna start off by the payment page, right? Payment page. Whoops. All right. Payment page. Okay. And then we're going to add a new one, right? So we'll create another one. It's going to be the next one, right? So we have payment page. We also have PayPal webhook. So PayPal webhook. This is essentially if you guys are going to do like a memberships, right? But I'm just going to add all of them just in case like nothing breaks or something like that, you know? So all right, add another page. And then for the next one, we are now going to do, let's see here, we got Stripe charge page, right? Stripe charge page. I'll click on publish and publish. And then I'll add another page. The thank you and process completes, right? Thank you page. Then I'll click on publish and publish. And I believe we also need the memberships. So let's just add in this other one. So over here under templates, I think we also need to add in this last one right here. We'll go ahead and also add in the packages, right? And then click on publish and publish. All right, so I think that's pretty much it. So now we can actually run a test transaction, right? So now let's go ahead and imagine that we're a new visitor for the very first time. And let's go through the process of how your customers will purchase on your website. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Now I'm Jenny Craig. Remember, don't forget, I'm Jenny Craig. So I'm gonna log in right here. And Jenny wants to list a property. So over here, I'll click on create a listing. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'll go ahead and just create a demo property and then show you what happens on the next page. All right, so I went ahead and I put in some information here and now I'll click on submit property. Right away, you guys are gonna see that they're brought to this page right here where they have to pay with PayPal and also Stripe. So we can select either one. So what I'm gonna do here is click on Stripe and then click on complete payment. This will then bring people where they actually have to pay us with a real credit card. So I'm actually gonna use my real credit card here and then check out on this website. And just like that, we're brought to our thank you page. You'll see here how there's just demo contents, but you guys can go ahead and redesign this and decorate this in the theme options of the houses theme options. So right here, I'll then click on go to dashboard. And that's it. You guys are going to see that these are now pending right here. So you'll see that uh, this one is pending, right? We paid for this one, right? And on the other one, we have not paid for this. So it has the pay now option. So users can always pay later if they want to. And this will actually be pending approval in your account. So now as an admin, all I got to do over here is going over to dashboard and then go over here to the listings, right? Under properties. And then you'll see that this is pending. So they've already paid for this. So I'll go ahead and click on edit right here and then I'll just approve it, right? Cause they've already paid for it. So up the top, I'll click on publish and publish. And that's it. The user has now successfully submitted the property and also paid us. We can actually check the backend over here under invoices and it'll display in the backend too. So you'll see that this person has paid. Uh, Jenny has paid right here and here is their invoice. 
So then under invoices, you're gonna see price for $5 and this status is paid. We can even double check this by checking the Stripe account. All right, party people, that is pretty much it for the CRM overview about the employee and customer login. If you guys have any questions about payment gateways or packages, let me know in the comments below. And with that said, let's move on to the next section. So in this part of the video, let me quickly show you guys how to re-import demos onto the websites. Now there's two ways to do this, and I'll give you the recommended way and then the optional way. So over here under the houses, if you click on demo import, you guys can go ahead and re-import any of these demos. So you can re-import this one, this one, and this one. However, the only caveat is that it's going to create all the pages also for that other demo, which could result in a lot of duplicate pages and also a really large menu. For example, I'll just go ahead and import one of these just to give you a demonstration. So I'll click on import demo, and then I'll import this one. And the same thing like before, we'll go over here and click on the customize and we'll assign the homepage to our actual homepage. So over here, homepage settings, and then we're going to find the homepage. So you guys see right here how there's two homepages. So if you guys do re-import demos, um, just know that you guys will have to uh, delete the other pages from the other demos. So I'll go ahead and close this. All right, so we have the menu up here, right? And then we have, I guess this right here, this login. If we scroll down, you guys will see the website imported correctly, but this part right here is sort of glitchy, as you can tell. Now, this does happen because the server is actually carrying bits and parts of the other templates. So what I recommend is to actually do a hard reset on your website and then re-import the demo. So let me show you guys how to do that. Let's go over here to plugins and click on add new plugin. Now, just remember, if you guys do re-import the demo this way, you will reset your entire website. So you're gonna delete everything and start over from scratch. This is good if you guys are like just beginning, right? But if this is like a live website with a lot of stuff on it, I do not recommend doing this because you're going to basically delete and reset your entire website. So you'll go ahead and activate this plugin right here, WP Resets. And then once you guys do that, on the bottom left, you're gonna see tools and then click on WP Reset. Here's a little pop-up banner. I'm just gonna close that. Now I'm gonna scroll down and I'm just gonna type in Reset right here under Site Resets. I'll go ahead and Reset. I'll click on Reset Sites and then click on Reset WordPress. All right, so the website has been reset. And if I click on Visit Sites, you'll see it is now back to its original factory settings. So now what we can do is reinstall the houses theme and then reimport the demo. So over here, Appearance, Themes, I'll activate the theme because it's still in our, uh, still in our themes. And now I want to re-enter the purchase code. Now I'll go ahead and activate the plugins again. So I'll go ahead and activate all the plugins. Here we have this pop-up notice again. I'll just go ahead and skip this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the houses and then just click on demo import. Now we're going to scroll down and now we are going to re-import that same demo. So right here, houses six, import demo. I'll scroll down here and then I'll click on continue and import. All right, and then I'll click on visit site. All right, and it looks like we're brought to the blog page, right? So all we need to do is assign the home page to our home page in the theme options. So home page settings, home page, and then I'll select home page. And then also for the post page, I'll select blog and then click on publish. And look at that. If you scroll down, you'll see that everything looks great. And then it's not buggy anymore. You can tell that when you go from demo to demo, it does carry a lot of the settings sometimes and it's hard to actually fix it. That's why I just recommend to do like a hard reset where you can just reset the website and start over from scratch. And everything looks great and the demo imported successfully. So that's how you guys can re-import a demo. I definitely recommend to reset the website if you wanna switch between demo to demo. Now there's also one thing I do wanna mention that is a known bug. If you guys actually import a demo and you search for a specific template, and if you actually click on one of these demos and this page comes out weird like this, this is a very quick fix. All you gotta do is go in your theme options and assign the property ad page and then that will go away. That was the only glitch and bug that I found personally that was consistent. So all I'll do is I'll go down here to property detail I'll go ahead and select a template. I'll select, uh, I'll select this one here. Click on save changes and that will remove the bug. So let's go back to visit site. Same thing, I'll do a quick search. I'll scroll down, I'll click on a property. So then you guys will see the property page propagates and everything looks good. 
So that was one bug that I saw when I was importing demos. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about importing demos or if there's anything else that you guys want to know about it, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you guys out. All right guys, so in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys some MLS IDX websites that can help you integrate MLS IDX onto your websites. The first one is contemplothemes.com. So this website actually has their own IDX plugin that they've created from scratch. Over here under pricing, you'll see that the IDX is about $79 a month and you guys can go ahead and purchase this. The great part about this company is that on the bottom right, you can go ahead and email the owner and they will integrate it for you, right? Now, IDX is a monthly service and this is standard across all industries. So don't think like, oh, I have to pay monthly. Every website has to pay for it because it's a service that's continuous. So you guys can go ahead and reach out to them. Their IDX costs $79. And I believe it supports more than 650 MLSs, okay? So contemplatethemes.com is a good choice. You guys can check out the description as well. There is links to all these websites in the description. The next one is Realtina. Now they actually have an integration specifically for the theme that we are using. So over here under products, MLS IDX, MLS integration, you'll see they have one for houses. So MLS for houses, I'll click on this link here. And then it'll take you to this page where they can actually sync this with the houses theme. So here you'll see that the Realtina plugin works specifically for the houses theme. You guys can always give them a phone call as well. If you guys have any questions or concerns, these guys can fully integrate the IDX MLS for you from Realtina. The next one is IDX Broker. Over here, I'll click on plans and pricing. And these guys can also integrate the MLS for you guys as well. So it looks like here they have two plans, right? They have the light plan and they also have the platinum plan. I'm not really sure the difference between both. I think you guys know more about this than I do personally, if you guys are brokers, but it looks like here they will do all of the work for you guys. I believe they have a one-time setup fee. Yeah, there is a one-time setup fee. So you might wanna give them a call here and just tell them that you found this video on YouTube and that you want them to integrate it. These guys should know about the house's theme. I'm pretty sure they do, right? It is the number one most popular real estate theme for WordPress. So go ahead and give them a call. You guys can call them on the phone number or also on the bottom right right here where you guys can send them an email. All right, party people, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys do have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have any questions about recommendations or MLS services, you guys can let me know. I do answer them quite often. This WordPress theme that we chose, I did spend a lot of time researching other themes and I felt like this theme was just suitable for everyone, right? It integrates with MLS. It has all the features you need. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good fit, right? So if you guys do also want to watch my other video on the best real estate themes, you guys can do that. But I do recommend this one. I think it's a great pick for most real estate agents. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Daryl Wilson, and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.